Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Picks. Today, we are going to be showcasing a run of Ratchet and Clank going Commando. Before we get into that, just a few quick reminders. GDQX will be live from TwitchCon October 20th to 22nd. The event will take place on the Games Done Quick stage, as well as streamed live on our Twitch channel. You can use exclamation GDQX in Twitch chat to find out more information and check out the schedule. Also, Awesome Games Done Quick 2024 will be live in person January 14th through 21st in Pittsburgh, PA. Use exclamation AGDQ in Twitch chat for more information. Feel free to go... Er, Feel free to go to uh, at Games on Quick on Twitter to let us know what you're hoping to see on the games list. Remote volunteer applications are open right now until October 4th. You can apply at GamesDoneQuick.com. With all that said, I will hand it over to the runner. Let him introduce himself in the game, which I've already introduced, I guess. So just himself. Hello. Hi. Can they all see me? Can they all hear me? Heck yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. What's going on? So uh, I'm Zem. If you don't know me then you probably don't know a whole lot about Ratchet and Clank speedrunning, and that's okay. So uh, to, to give the, the briefest of summaries of what's going to happen today, so I'm going to be doing something quite special. Uh, I'm going to be speedrunning the platinum trophy of this game. Actually, that reminds me, I need to pull up my notes, since there's quite a lot of moving parts of this category. If you've never seen a Ratchet and Clank speedrun before, I think this is actually going to be a good introduction. Uh, and the reason I think it's going to be a good introduction for you is because the category itself, like what we're about to... What I'm about to show you here, I'm sorry, I just uh, sent my GDQ thing off into space. Okay, uh, max percent is kind of a weird category name, um, but what it all is, it's, it's, it's essentially uh, every collectible that carries between playthroughs. So every platinum bolt, every skill point. Uh, the the benchmarks for getting you know certain millions of bolts, those will give me trophies. It's it's kind of a twofold category. Um, and the reason I'm doing this like platinum trophy spin on this particular category is that it doesn't really add a whole lot of extra time. It's only a couple of extra minutes to get the platinum trophy. And it kind of combines my two uh, passions as far as content creation is concerned, which is speedrunning and platinum trophy hunting. Um, it's uh, one of those I've been doing for many, many years. And one of them I just kind of started, but here we are. Uh, I, as you can see here, I've created a fresh PlayStation profile. So Pogbones in the chat, please and thank you. Uh, and there's, it, it's going to be like a two-fold timer. Um, it's going to be easier to keep track of one of them than it will the other. So uh, the max percent timer will be the timer that we'll have on screen. And the platinum trophy timer will begin once I get my first trophy. So once that starts, the timer begins. And then the, the, that timer ends when I finally get the platinum. And then maybe like a couple minutes after that, we'll actually end the run itself. So uh, all that being said, I just have to do one or two quick little setup things here. And then we should be fine to go here. So I'm going to start up a new game. Uh, I'm on the wrong profile. This is, I don't know how it didn't log me on to Pogbones. My apologies. But yeah, I want to tell you guys a little something about myself just to, just to kind of break the ice a little bit. So um, like I said, I've been speedrunning the Ratchet and Clank games for a long time now. It's been nearly 10 years that I've been running these games consistently on Twitch. Uh, this is what I did full-time for a very long time. Um, and in the last couple of years, I've decided that it's time to start branching out a bit more. So I started focusing more on my YouTube, more on generalized content, but I still, of course, do a lot of Ratchet and Clank stuff because that's what my audience loves, and I love it too. I, I, I try to pretend like I don't love it, but I do. Um, and so... Yeah, it's actually, even though you can tell I have an American accent, I just want to let you guys know it is actually quite late for me. I very recently moved to the Netherlands, so it's already 10 p.m. for me, meaning we're going to be burning the midnight oil on this run. Um, so if you guys are down for me to, to watch someone make a couple dumb mistakes from time to time, this is the right run for you. So now that I've finally loaded up my correct file, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to... Uh, basically, just change a couple of settings before we load into the actual run itself. So, uh, I'm going to turn off vibration, turn off quick select, pause. Uh, this is all fine. And then I'm going to reverse my camera. Everybody knows reverse, reverse fast is the truth. It is the only correct way to experience this game. And if you disagree with me, I am the authority on all things Ratchet and Clank, and therefore you are incorrect. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to make a backup save just in case something gets a little funky because a lot can go wrong in a category like this. Um, so with all that being said, I believe it's time to start. And so we start on 
um, what was formerly known as SDA timing. Um, and so that means that we start on first input and, and end on last input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this file and I'm going to count down from three um, when it's time to start the timer. So with all that being said, let's begin the run. You get this one load screen right here. We get another load screen right here. And then the timer will begin in three, two, one, begin. All right, so here we are, we're on Aranos. Uh, and I also just want to let you guys know what you're in for with this run. I'm going to be doing my best just juggling uh, lots of different things that you're actually going to be seeing this run, as well as just kind of chatting with you guys. So uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, or want to know more about the game, want to know more about me, want to know more about, I don't know, the the, the wonders and, and majesty of um, the 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 the... I don't know, man. Just ask me your questions. I, I, I have chat open. You can talk with me. I couldn't even think of anything actually remotely funny or interesting to say. This is this is how rusty I am with this sort of thing. It's been a while since I've done a GDQ run, so you guys got the gonna have to forgive me. I I, uh, I may break what I call the mom filter from time to time, and I'm going to do my best to keep it PG-13 at most. Um, and I'm essentially just going to be doing my best here to just kind of chit chat with you guys. All right. What, why did you get into speedrunning this game specifically? Uh, well, okay, okay, okay. There's already a few questions I'm noticing. So while I'm clearing up this first level where there's not really a whole lot of interesting stuff going on, I'm going to go down the line here. So um, will you be going for a PB? Unfortunately, today I will not be going for a PB. And that is because uh, here on the Games Done Quick channel, we observe practical gaming habits, meaning that every hour, nearly on the hour, we're going to have to take a little break. Uh, not my choice. I just want to put that out there, but I'm more than happy to abide by the rules. I, I am a law-abiding citizen here. So, um, here's the first trick. We're going to go over here and we're going to side flip out of bounds. Now, you may be noticing already that I'm kind of side flipping a lot instead of just running forward. I'm doing what's called a macaroni. Um, so, this is actually one of the, the first tricks that you learn when you start running Ratchet and Clank. What you do is you uh, input a long jump. So like uh, imagine that you had clank on your back. You input X L R R1 and forward, right? To do a normal long jump. But because you don't have clank, you're obviously not going to long jump forward. So what you do is you do the long jump input and then you cancel it. You immediately roll the analog stick to the side and you do a side flip with a little bit of a tiny boost. It's it's just barely tiny bit faster than walking. Oh yeah, by the way, you, you don't actually have to fight this boss. We so can just kind of like you know, go around him if we want. <laughs> that wall, there's like, that that little, little tiny bit of the corner right there, that's the only part of the wall that's exposed, otherwise you can't go past him. All right, so, um, why did, you, why did I move to Europe? I'm just checking the questions here. I moved to Europe to pursue a better life. Um, I wasn't satisfied in America, and so I moved out over here. Oh yeah, here's a neat little trick for you. What we're gonna do is, uh, the walls are, you're gonna learn if you've never seen a run of this before, that walls are just kind of suggestions. They don't like really exist in this game. Uh, you just kind of have to know where to jam Ratchet from time to time. So uh, you can just kind of jam him in between that. And, and this is also a, uh, a skip that you guys have probably never seen before. Um, hold on. A little bit later. A little bit later. There we go. Uh, so I just skipped Wupash Nebula. So, um, for whatever reason, and by some unholy grace of God, we somehow found out that if you enter the ship uh, and press triangle and down as you're entering Maktar Nebula, it, it normally the game forces you to go to Wupash Nebula to do a tutorial spaceship fight, but you don't actually have to do that. You can just skip it. I don't, I don't really know why that's in the game or how that even works, but... Um, you know, I'm sure somebody a little bit more nerdy than me will know the answers. So, I do want to give you guys a little bit of, of uh, context. Um, by the way, this is a Sony-sanctioned gambling right here. We have to hit these slot machines over and over. I just got horrible luck. Wow, two of them broke immediately. This is bad. Uh, you have to hit these slot machines a bare minimum of 31 times. And so, the more these explode, the worse it is for me. Um, I am going to go now over to this slot machine and just hit it once. Uh, just for good measure. Um, yeah, what was I talking about? I don't even remember. It's good to have you all here. So, if you guys don't know, uh, which I'm sure most of you don't, because, you know, you all have lives and you all do things in your everyday life, aside from follow random speedrunners on Twitch, so I want to give you a little bit of context. 
So for many, many years, uh, you know, I, I was I was kind of the guy in these games. You know, like I I I had the clout, I had the world records, I had a, I had it all. You know, and for some reason, in, in late 2021, I, I kind of had a I don't know, like I, maybe it was like a like like my brain finally fully developed, or I just you know I, something changed inside of me, and I and I kind of realized that I just I didn't want my life to just be entirely centered around these games anymore, and so. Uh, I fell into a, a, a pretty deep depression for a long time. Uh, I gotta be careful here. And it kind of made me lose my love of speedrunning. Um, and I still did some stuff from time to time, but it wasn't really a whole lot. And in those couple of years that I didn't really speedrun all that much, everybody kind of... Like, anybody who wasn't already at that like super high level basically caught up, and most people surpassed me in these games. And so... I didn't really mind for a long time because I was making other content, but um, now I've kind of grown even more, and I'm at a point in my life where I'm no longer afraid of, you know, not... I don't know. Basically what I'm saying is I've reconciled both parts of my personality. I, I can both be happy running these games and be happy not running these games. And so I'm just kind of enjoying the journey for what it is. I just came back to this category last week. Actually, I say I came back. I've barely even run this category all that much. I've run many other categories like it, um, but never this one exactly. That was such a debate. We need triple bar here to get the skill point. And it gave me double bar instead of triple. Um, but now, basically, what you're going to see here today is a work in progress. Um, so this is one of only three categories in the original Ratchet & Clank trilogy that I've never gotten world record in. So, oh, please don't explode. All right, I have to death abuse. <laughs> oh, this, no. this is great. This is great. We love this part. Um, so this is going about as horribly as it could right off the rip. Uh, but this is this happens on about 50% of runs. So, you know, you can't really do a whole lot. Um, so again, this is bad for the max percent portion of this run, but for the platinum trophy portion of this run. Okay, I just got the skill point. So now the trophy is going to pop up and that's when the timer begins. So this, the plat trophy timer has now officially begun in about, yeah, in about right as this pops up. So now is when that timer would begin. But again, you know, it, it, you'll get the hang of it. It's not that hard to pick up on. It's just the same crap over and over with trophies littered throughout. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah, what you're going to see today is a bit of a work in progress. There's going to be some moments where things go really, really smoothly and some where they just kind of go really terribly. And uh, you're just going to have to just accept that that's just a part of the journey. So, with that being said, we're now moving through Maktar Nebula. What's going on here uh, is that... Uh, uh, what's happening in the story again? I don't even remember. You know, you, when you you play these games for so many years and all the storylines and all all the little like nuances just kind of blur together after a while. He has to find Clank or something. There's no Clank in case you can't tell. Normally he's on Ratchet's back. He's just kind of chilling. But, uh, you know... Well, whatever, man. We're going to be doing a death gauntlet. These are pretty common in these sorts of games. So the the thing with these death gauntlets uh, that a lot of casual players don't know is that the spawns, the enemies come out of the canisters depending on, number one, how far away you are from the canisters, and number two, what your camera angle is when you're facing, or like what where your camera is facing. So for example, if I stand right here in, towards the center of the arena, Whatever is dead ahead of me. So these two canisters, these will always pop out enemies. However, if I were to move too close to them, as, a, as an example, so like right here, there would be more spawns behind me because it's just too close. So those enemies just spawn over there. Um, it's a little weird of a system, but eventually you get used to it, you know? And so here's a little trick for you all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate a, a little something to show you how broken these games are. So this is Chain Blade, and you get a, uh, a, a, a skill point and therefore a trophy for beating Chain Blade with just a wrench. So normally this is a little tough, but if you get him right here in the center of the arena, when he stands up, he's supposed to like fly away and try to hit you with his Chain Blade swords. But instead he just gets stuck in place and you can just hit him over and over. Um, so he will eventually come down and uh, start swinging at me again, like right here. And if you hit him on the side, you get, like, mega damage. So you, you see me, like, like his health bar just gets, like, eviscerated. And uh, and there you go. That's how you beat Chain Blade with just a wrench. Just get him in the center of the arena, and then the rest just takes care of itself. The trophy number two popping up here in just a second. 
And now we're gonna exit out of here. So now we're done with everything on Magtar. We're gonna head out. We're gonna go to Endaco. And Endaco is, surprise, surprise, where we might pick up a little companion of ours named Clank. Maybe you've heard of him. Um, so yeah, hello everybody. I, I also wanna give uh, my very first shout out of this run. I'm gonna be shouting out a lot of people. I wanna give my very, very first shout out to just the Ratchet and Clank community in general. There's a lot of people, a lot of faces I already recognize in here from the Ratchet speedrunning community. Um, you know, I, I just want to say to you guys, like, I, I, this isn't some sort of, like, declaration that, like, this isn't some sort of big way of me saying, oh, I'm back. You guys are going to see me doing all these categories and all this stuff. Um, I can't promise that. What I can promise is I'm going to continue running these games and I'm going to keep doing my best at them for as long as I'm having fun with them, so... Uh, it's great to have you guys here. Uh, I'm happy to be able to put on a show for you all. And I'm really, really proud of how much you guys have grown and, and how good you've all gotten uh, in all the time that I've been away. So it's really, really sick to see. Um, so yeah, now we're heading to Endaco. And I'm going to get to show off Crane Skip. Are you all ready for Crane Skip? This is a, this is a, a maddening skip. This is basically baby's first skip. Uh, whenever you're learning these games, uh, if you're doing the any percent categories, you have to learn crane skip. And apparently there's a crane skip skip. I don't know that one yet. I I, I only hear the murmurings, uh, the murmurings in, in, in the tides. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm going to be doing uh, crane skip because that's what I'm familiar with. I've done it. I've, I've been doing crane skip as long as I've been walking. Uh, at least that's how it feels. So... What crane skip is, normally you have to get a crane and move a block over, but instead you can just hop on these guys, take a hit, swing your wrench, and then double jump out of the wrench swing to grab onto that ledge. That saves about, uh, I don't know, about 45 seconds, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. I don't know, what do I look like? Some kind of nerd to you guys? Um, so at this point now, we're just going to be going through... And I'm going to be showing you guys another cool little exploit involving the cranes here. So this time we actually are going to act... I don't want to talk about what just happened. Okay, we're going to do crane skip again because it was it went so well the first time that I decided it was best to show it to you all again. Um, just to make sure everybody got it down, right? Yes, yes. Just to make sure you guys are completely aware of what you have to do. So what you do is jump, land, take a hit, swing the wrench, double jump, ledge grab, and you're up. See, isn't that beautiful? Just such a nice skip. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, second shout outs to uh, Isaki, or Isaki BV, which stands for Bouvet Islands. He's not actually from the Bouvet Islands, but somebody's got to represent, you know what I mean? Um, so this category was created by Isak uh, because, well, we needed some sort of category for PlayStation 3. Oh yeah, I should probably talk about that, but first I'm gonna talk about this. So I'm gonna corral these little guys over here and then activate the crane. And I'm doing this for a very specific reason. So I'm going to do this electrolyzer puzzle right here, right? And I need to also tell you that there's a skill point for destroying 10 enemies with a crane. However, there's a little weirdness that goes on right here. So if I fire this weapon right here and blow all those enemies up as I enter the crane, they count as crane kills, even though I clearly didn't do anything with the crane. So now when I destroy five enemies over here, so one... And then I'm going to get four little sweepers over here. It'll give me the skill point after the fourth one instead of needing to kill uh, ten enemies doing this extremely tedious method of killing them. So there's the skill point. Another trophy will be popping up any second now. And guys, if you can do me a little favor this run, anytime there's a trophy, I, I just need you to pog bones a couple times. You know, can I just get a little... Uh, get, that, like, GDQ ratchet runs and pog bones go together like peanut butter and jelly. So I need you guys to pog bones every single time you see a trophy pop up. Okay, because there's going to be a lot of them this run. So now we've moved the blocks over. And at this point, uh, I get to also introduce to you clank clips, or I guess uh, more specifically, they're called camera clips. So camera clips, um, if you guys don't know, I mean, I'm sure most of you know this stuff because, uh, you know, I, I found that in my time of being a, a nerd on the internet that almost everybody knows more about this stuff than I do. But you guys know what actors are, right? I'm not talking about Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm talking about, at, like, within an actual game, there are things that have collision called actors. And a lot of people don't know this, but the camera in Ratchet & Clank is also an actor. Uh, this is not the right way to set this up. So what we can do is, 
we can line up the camera and use it to punch Clank through the wall. And that's the easy one. This is kind of the hard one. Hey, Zem, I have another question for you. Trans writes, this is not a question. Ain't that the gosh, the gosh darn truth? Zem92 says trans rights, okay? So we we stand human rights around these parts. Um, so, all right. So now we're done with the clank section. So if you guys remember, that's a clank section that probably took you several minutes when you were a kid, when you played through these games. If you played through these I'm assuming you all played through these games as a kid. Listen, we are all Ratchet and Clank players today. So uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just, just play along. Okay, just play along. It'll be easier for everybody. Um, so yeah, we turned what was normally like a several minute long section into, uh, you know, 30 seconds maximum, I think. So now at this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be upgrading our little Lancer right here, which should upgrade in just one more enemy. Um, I'm going to blow these guys up and then I'm going to fire a bomb down here. You'll see why in just a second. And I'm going to grab this platinum bolt right here. Um, but yeah, so you guys, uh, you guys enjoying this so far? You guys enjoying the zaniness? I, I, I like to check in with chat from time to time. If you're not enjoying things, uh, you can fill out my my form in triplicate uh, to http colon slash slash twitch www slash m92 slash subscribe. Uh, I, I recommend the tier three option. That's that's uh that will guarantee that your complaints get filed faster than anybody else's. Um, so with all that being said, we're now on to the first boss. And now with our upgraded Lancer, what we're going to do is we're going to end, uh, this boss fight with the Lancer. Then we're going to swap over to the gravity bomb and hit the boss as he's exploding with the gravity bomb. And if you guys don't know the way that experience works in this game, it's not about how much damage you do. It's about how, uh, what, what weapon you end the boss fight with so even though i did zero damage to that boss with the gravity bomb because the gravity bomb was the last weapon i hit the boss with all the boss's xp got funneled into it uh imagine it like uh if any of you are moba players uh for example i'm i play league of legends a lot so you can basically it's pretty safe to assume that i'm a pretty terrible person in my normal everyday life but that's beside the point of this run the real point being uh you have to imagine it like last hitting in MOBAs. The, 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 you have to just last hit with your weapons to get experience with them. Um, so now we're done with that. And if you guys weren't aware of what I just did there, I did the same skip going back to Maktar that I did getting there uh, to skip Wupash Nebula. So we don't want to do Wupash Nebula at all this run. Is this also all bolts? Yes, we will be collecting all bolts, all skill points, all weapons, and even upgrading them to the final level. If you guys don't remember... Uh, from your playthroughs when you were a kid. Actually, listen, if you played through these games as a kid, you know how tedious it was to upgrade these to blue. Um, it, it goes, first upgrade is orange, and then you buy the yellow upgrade, and then you upgrade from yellow to blue. Um, and the yellow to blue upgrade takes forever, 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 with every single weapon. But I'm going to show you guys some absolute insane stuff. Um... This is honestly not going to look like it should be allowed in a speedrun. It's we do what is basically the uh, 3D platforming equivalent of arbitrary code execution. That's the easiest way I can describe it. Um, it's not really arbitrary code execution, but it looks a lot like it. Um, so you have that to look forward to at some point in the run. I don't want to spoil too much, though. Uh, you guys will see more of that later. So for now, we're just going through this. And we are going to be uh, destroying all of these transponders. We have to destroy six of them. This spot is uh, known for having some pretty atrocious and boring gameplay, no matter what category you're running. Uh, as a matter of fact, we even... Uh, I don't know. It's basically the, the meme has taken on a life of its own at this point. Not collecting all gold bolts. I love Riley Reed. We will be collecting all... Uh, wait, did I say gold bolts? I meant platinum bolts. We will be collecting all platinum bolts this run. So don't you worry, Riley. Um, so, okay. Is there a reason not to get all plat bolts on Indaco? Because it's faster to do it later. If you ever see me skip something, skip anything that may look important or seems like I forgot something, it's almost always because it's faster to do it a different way. 
or I just straight up forgot. Uh, that happens from time to time. I'm not perfect. I don't think you are either, so you're not allowed to judge me. <laughs> um, so with valid. so with this, we will be finishing up the transponders. We're done with the jamming array. We are out of here. So now we'll be heading over to Barlow. Um, so do you guys remember those hover bike races? Um, or maybe you just remember, like, you don't necessarily have to have played Ratchet and Clank for this. Do you guys just, you, you guys know what, what hover bike races look like in video games in general, right? Like, like you, you like race down a track and you go like faster than the other people. And then, and then like you, you make like three laps and then you win. Um, just like, just like bear that in mind when you're watching what's about to happen because, uh, it's going to be a little different than you're used to. That's all I can really say. So uh, we're heading over here to Barlow. So normally the way that Barlow works is you have to kind of make a big old little loop around the entire level in order to, uh, you know, get to this racetrack. But what you can actually do over here is you can just high jump and hug the rock wall and then ledge grab up here. Skips the whole level. Um, and so now we're going to buy the decoy glove because it is infinitely useful. And we're going to head on over here to this little... Uh, uh, hover bike like Harley Davidson type dude. So we're going to be doing this electrolyzer puzzle and normally I would just do my best to read chat during these races and just kind of like, you know, uh, break the tedium of them with some interesting quips and fun facts about myself from time to time, but I kind of really need to focus here. Um, this is... Uh, <laughs> I hate using this bud buzzword, but it's unironically correct here. This is a triple frame perfect trick. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go right here and this might work? No. You'll see it when it happens. It's um, it's easy to understand in theory and incredibly complex to do in real time. So there's lap one. Let's see here. That might be lap two. No, not quite. A little bit too far to the left there. Let's see. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work either, I don't believe. That might work. No, a little too far to the right. So yeah, this is race skip, um, and it's extremely tough. And there's a lot of runners in the community who are quite good at it because they've had a lot of practice with it. But like I said, I've only been really playing this category for a week, and so I, I haven't had the chance to, to really lab this skip a lot. Um, so I'm just gonna basically be eyeballing it and just doing my best. That's not, no way in hell that's going to work, but I, I went for it anyway, just to see. Kinda gotta, uh, that might work? Um, so yeah, the way this works is that there's like one teensy frame perfect pixel that you can like jam the hover bike into against this specific pipe. And it's the checkpoint all the way on the opposite side of the level, the one that you need to initiate the end of race. Um, yeah, this was discovered relatively recently, I want to say, within the last six months or maybe a year. Um, which is, if you guys don't know, quite new for speedrunners because we tend to evolve at a snail's pace. There we go. We beat the race in 1 minute and 33 seconds, which is about 40 seconds faster than we normally beat it in. If you're super fast, you can beat it in 30 seconds or less. Uh, there's the Speed Demon Trophy. And we have to go back in real quick here just to pick up a Platinum Bull, but that's really all we need here. So uh, this is the one that my community loves spamming Zem the Bolt on every single time. Uh, guys, don't worry. I got the Bolt. Uh, I forgot that bolt in a in an all platinum bolt run one time, and my chat never let me hear the end of it. So, uh, with that being said, now we're moving on to Felton. Oh yeah, that's a pog bones. Pog bones in the chat, gamers. That's a pog bones. Um, says <laughs> <Zem> the bolt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here we're gonna pick up a nanotech boost real quick, like, real quick, like, it should only take a couple of seconds. And now we're gonna do Felton. So, uh, Felton, this is actually low-key, uh, it takes a lot of game knowledge to be able to do this specific spot efficiently and consistently. This is technically a luck-based section, depending on what patterns you get and, and the way that the AI behaves. But it's what we call pseudo-randomness, where, yes, it's it's random. However, if you are skilled enough to deal with whatever RNG is thrown at you, it should not matter. Uh, again, I am quite rusty at this, so I am not as polished as I once was. Uh, however, I used to be the undisputed goat of this section, so I still have some moves left in me. 
Um, essentially, there are three different types of ships to destroy in this section. There's the blue guys, the green guys, and the purple guys. The green guys are very, very nice. You, they, they blow up in one hit and they fly in straight lines. The purple guys are, are quite tanky, uh, but they still fly in relatively predictable patterns. I got an ammo drop. Nice. It's the blue guys that are super annoying. So these guys right here, what they'll do is they'll like warp across the screen from time to time. Um, and so it's in your better interest to know which ones are about to warp as well as like what awkward flight patterns they're about to take. Uh, they, this is something a lot of runners don't understand. The ships around you move similar to the way that you yourself move. It's like they're trying to fight against your camera. And so the less you move in erratic lines, the less these guys move as well. I think that actually went really, really well. That was a really strong Felton. Um, I don't know the exact time of that, but um, that was very, very solid. I'm pretty sure that was under two minutes, which most runners of these categories don't really get very consistently. So no tack is... Uh, I'm going to actually restock on ammo here just because it's right by me. But no tack is quite the interesting level. Um, normally you need the Therminator, is that what it's called? The thing that freezes bodies of water. You normally need that to beat this level. Um, spoiler alert, you, you don't need it. It's, it's, you're kind of wasting your time if you try to even go for it. Because now we're just going to go out of bounds right over here. And we're going to cut across here. And now we're already like done with the entire reason you would need the Therminator to begin with. Uh, actually, yeah, I am going to swap packs here just for the sake of consistency. So now we're going to pull out our decoys. And you're going to, I'm going to demonstrate the very first, uh, like broken use of these decoy gloves. Normally you use them to distract enemies. You can also use them to clip through walls. Like I said, this entire run, the walls are just going to be merely a suggestion. Um, so we're done with that. We got another platinum bolt uh, to our name. And now we just need to get past these guys without dying. Uh, I'm going to upgrade the gravity bomb right here just for the sake of upgrading it. We get the coordinates for Slim Cognito Shell Shack uh, where, the, where you can find a talking dog. And occasionally the talking dog does sing, um, but not very often, okay? So we're going to go to the Shell Shack relatively soon. This is a SpongeBob reference, by the way. I don't know if I've made that, if that's like clear to all of you. It's, it's all just one long SpongeBob reference, the, the Shell Shack. But anyway, uh, this is also kind of like, so, like a cheater moment <laughs> where it, it really does not look like we should be allowed to do this, but we are. Um, so we climb up that and then we can just take this little taxi right here. So what I just did there are called tiptoes. Um, if you glide down onto a sloped surface and like restart your glide as you land on the surface, you can kind of eke out a double jump in a spot you're not supposed to be eking out double jumps. So um, yeah, yeah, those are tiptoes. You're gonna be seeing those a few times throughout this run. Not very often, but you'll see them from time to time. Sam, in which segment are you going to talk about your Europe journey? I mean, it depends what you guys want to know about my Europe journey. So yeah, like I was saying before, everybody, I am uh, an American citizen, born and raised. I lived there for 31 years. That's right. I'm 31 years old. Um, so I'm probably older than about 95% of you. So you better treat me with some respect. Gosh darn it. Um, but yeah, so i need some water i'm singing for a wedding this weekend i want to make sure or that uh I'm, I'm not like you know that my voice can actually function when i go um so if you guys don't oh, what was i saying what was i talking about oh yeah i'm old uh my chat thinks i'm balding but i'm not um you're i got another um, trophy sorry go ahead up. church you're up you're up okay yeah so i was an american i still am an american citizen Lived there for 31 years, and for whatever reason, uh, during the the course of the pandemic, I said to myself, you know what, I want to see if life really is better in other places. Um, and so normally most people work, or most people move to uh, a new continent for work or for marriage or for some other prior commitment. I'm going for, and, I, and I'm sorry to everybody that I'm going to be offending uh, with me speaking French for a second here. I'm, I'm here for the joie de vivre, the, the joy of life. Um, yes, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I've, I've come to learn that saying anything in French is quite offensive to Europeans, so I have to apologize in advance. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm basically just here to see if, if the grass really is greener on the other side. 
And uh, it's always been a dream of mine to travel and see the world. And I figured, you know, I, I have uh, no wife, no dog, no kids, no house, no commitments, no loved ones. I was not what expecting was I for you to go that. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so, ba so basically, um, I just want to see if, uh, if you know, it's actually worth it to travel the world and, and, and uh, experience all these new things and, and maybe even by the end of it, grow a new appreciation for the home country that I left behind. Um, so it, it's a very holistic journey. Um, and I've, and I'm, I'm absolutely loving it here. I feel like I'm, I'm thriving more so than I ever did in America, at least so far. Um, I just recently uh, found out that I'm I'm going to be like basically if you okay I actually want to talk to you guys about this can I, I'm gonna go on my first rant here because there's nothing really that exciting that's gonna happen for a while so I, I want to tell you guys how much of a pain in the keister this whole process has been as far as like settling here so I want to tell you guys so I, I moved from America to the, to the Netherlands right and a lot of you guys are probably thinking. Well, why the hell would you move to the Netherlands? Is it is it is it because of things that we're not allowed to talk about on a, on a live stream happening in a certain spot in the city or in the country? And the answer is no. Uh, I'm not here for anything, any reason that that may be construed as raunchy or or R-rated, as it were. Um, I, I my process for why I chose the Netherlands was very very precise. Um, number one, I needed to find a country that spoke primarily English. Um, not because of any sort of weird system of beliefs of mine, but just because I, I, I'm, I, I don't really know a lot of other languages. I, I'm, I used to be an opera singer. Um, I, I, was a, I was an opera singer for 10 years, and so I know some Italian, I know some French, I know some German, but not nearly enough in any of those three languages to justify moving to those countries because there's still not a, a, a large speaking English population. I'd be very, very lost. So that immediately narrowed it down to seven countries. That immediately narrowed it down to Ireland and the UK. You know, I, I'm kind of clumping them because they're, they're <laughs> the Irish will hate me for doing this, but I'm clumping them because they're geographically very close. Um, so uh, I, Ireland and Great Britain, right? Um, Belgium and the Netherlands, and then Scandinavia. So Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Um, those are the seven countries that speak a very, very large amount of English in the, in in the in Europe, at least more so that I've found than most other countries, aside from maybe Iceland. But I don't really want to live in Iceland. So, um, basically, at that point, it came down to uh, two other factors. The first of which was uh, proximity to the rest of Europe and how easy or how difficult the visa process was. So proximity to Europe meant that it kind of rules out Ireland and the UK because I don't really want to be that disconnected from the rest of the main body of Europe. And uh, the visa process... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I need to continue down geographically. And Scandinavia is just a bit too cold for me. Um, I, I'm kind of a baby when it comes to the cold. I, I, I prefer, uh, you know, oh God, I need to convert to, to metric real quick. I prefer as much 19 degrees Celsius weather as humanly possible. So like anything 60 to, to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, I, I need as much of that as possible in my life. And so, you know, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, too far north. Then it narrowed it down to, to basically Belgium and the Netherlands. And the Netherlands, if you all don't know, has an extremely easy visa process for uh, self-employed Americans. I am a full-time content creator. Uh, I do Twitch, I do YouTube uh, for a living. I'm very lucky to be able to say that. And I work very, very hard to make sure I don't squander that luck. Um, and if you are a self-employed individual in uh, who is either an American or a Japanese citizen, you fall under what is called DAFT, the Dutch-American Friendship Treaty. And this treaty states, if you are a self-employed business, you are allowed to move to the Netherlands on a self-employed visa that lasts two years and can be renewed up to five years. Um, so all I need to do is just have like a nominal sum of money in a Dutch bank account to prove that my business is solvent. 
Um, and and that's it. I, I'm allowed to conduct business here for two straight years um, and just kind of see what it's all about. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm breaking all these buildings in this giant clank fight so that uh, I get a skill point for it. So you need to break all the buildings. And similarly, I'm getting another skill point at the same time where I don't damage this boss with anything other than my fists. Um, so I'll be getting this skill point in just a second here. This will be popping up. There's skill point number one. And now I'm going to punch this guy. And we're going to... I, I want to bait him over here. We're going to begin the loop here. Uh, as soon as he decides to be kind to me. So, okay. And now we can begin the loop. We can just jump on him over and over and over and over and over until he dies. Um, and that's it. We get two skill points for the price of one, basically. Yeah, and that's a pog bones. Um, hello from Belgium, Sam GL for the run. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and so basically, that's why I chose the Netherlands to begin with. Um, I, I've never, I had never been here before moving here. Can you believe that? What, what, a, what an insane thing to do. What an insane thing to do. Just, just move to a country that you've never been to and you have no idea how it's going to work and you have no idea if you could even stay here. I, I, I'm kind of a crazy person. Um, at least that's how a lot of my friends view me. I've actually had friends sit me down and tell me that they're worried that I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie, but I've never viewed it as being an adrenaline junkie. I've always just viewed it as like, I don't know. I, I don't think that that's what I am. I just like, I have values and, and, and things that I want to achieve with my life. And I'm just not willing to let things really stop me, you know? Even if it seems a little bit insane. So um, right now, uh, I am in this strange interim process where I am not a Dutch citizen. Um, I have 90 days to file for my visa. So I got here on September 4th, meaning I have, uh, what, 63 days now to apply for my visa. However, there was a problem. Um, the problem being, I am not allowed to apply for my visa until I have an apartment and I've registered with the local municipality. Now, if you guys don't know, let me learn you a thing or two about the, the Dutch housing market. I'm sure that's not what you expected to hear when you came to this speed run, but I'm going to learn you a thing or two about it. The Dutch housing market is as close to a post-apocalyptic market I have ever seen in my entire life. It's, it's just nonstop people like getting like like having to pay insane amounts of money for apartments that that they should not have to pay that much for and it is so unbelievably hard oh i died um just kidding i did that intentionally this is another lap skip type beat so uh same sort of thing as what we did on barlow i'm just gonna be uh breaking or i'm just gonna be crashing into this wall over and over to manipulate the checkpoint system and then uh, heading back towards the lap marker and beating this entire race in under 30 seconds, which will get me another trophy. But we're not done here. Uh, I have to do this again after I, you know, beat this race. And I have to do a little, uh, I have to do a tricky skip called tree hops. More gaming, less talking, please. I will not be doing that, as a matter of fact. I will talk as much as I want. And if you have a problem with that, you can shut the hell up. <laughs> Sorry, I keep it a buck fifty with Chad. I, I, I'm not the kind of person who. Oh my God, tree hops. Okay, hold on. Sorry. So, tree hops. Let me explain real quick here. Um, I have to bounce the hover bike off of tiny, tiny, tiny little things. Uh, it's very difficult to do, and it's going to take me several tries. So, just relax. Um, uh, it's all going to be good. Kick back. It'll be uh, done before you know it. Sorry, yeah, guys. I, I Every now and then, I just have to, like... I, I get one guide by Twitch chat. That's what we call it. When, like, one person types one negative thing. And then I just... I basically just make fun of them. So that's my one one-guy moment of the stream. So, uh... Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Okay, so we got tree hops. And the reason I had to do that is because uh, it helps me access this secret part of the level where I can grab the nanotech boost. Um, so now what we're going to do is something quite interesting now that we have the charge boots. Um, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to lure these guys all the way over here. And I'm going to do something quite interesting here. So this is called the swing shot proxy. 
Okay, great. So, uh, for whatever reason, the wrench has a lock-on system, and if you're trying to go both, like, uh, I don't even know how it works. I'm not gonna sit here and, and, and like yammer on about something I don't really truly understand. Basically, wrench lock on to enemy, wrench not supposed to lock on to enemy, wrench send you flying upwards at 8 trillion miles an hour. That's all you really need to know about it. We're going to be doing that a couple more times throughout the run. Um, I'm sure there's other people in the chat who understand why that works, and they'll be able to happily tell you all the all the things. But like I said, I am uh, I'm too much of a of a of a sigma Chad <laughs> to know how it works. <laughs> I'm sorry. I promise I'll never call myself a sigma Chad on this stream ever again. <laughs> Um, so now we save and we load, and the reason we're doing this is because, um, like, the reason we did all of this is because, uh, I need to refresh the level. Uh, when the levels are in completed states, they have fewer enemies, and I needed to remove about 18 enemies. I believe that's the number. I, I could be wrong about that. But uh, removing 18 enemies from this planet makes this next skill point much, much easier. And if any of you have ever played this game before, you know how impossibly hard this skill point is. This is the Wrench Ninja 2 skill point, where I have to kill every single enemy in this entire level with the wrench. So we're going to kill these guys with the wrench. Obviously, that nanotech blast was made of wrenches. Um, so here's something else that you guys might not know. This turret over here. Uh, this turret, also made of wrenches. So you can kill enemies with this uh, with this turret, for whatever reason. Uh, work smarter, not harder, gamers. And uh, let's see here. I gotta kill this guy right here. So yeah, it, it's strange how this whole skill point works. Like what is and is not allowed. It, it feels like you know, as if the rules are kind of just being made up on the fly. Um, but I promise you, there's a there's a well structured organized system with how this level works and if you want to understand all the ins and outs of how to do this level you can go to youtube.com slash zem wait is that my no zem 92 youtube.com slash zem 92 and i have an entire youtube video outlining exactly how to do this from start to finish and never mess it up ever again so you're welcome um so yeah anyway i want to also as i'm doing this circle back to the dutch apartment thing um so the housing say. market. I want to hear more about this. <laughs> oh wait! First off, you gotta let this guy run past this doorway, and then you can kill him. You can't kill him before that; otherwise, it won't work. Um, I gotta kill. Don't shoot me. Oh. So a lot of awful things in a row just happened there. Wrench lock on. It was my friend previously, but it actually just screwed me over because. I hyperstruck in a certain way to avoid the gunfire, but then it locked onto an enemy and sent me a different way and got me hit and killed. I have to reload the entire level. Anyway, so, um, the housing market thing, right? So, I had never thought I would ever see anything in my entire life worse than New York City when it came to finding an apartment, but somehow, uh, Amsterdam found a way. Um, Amsterdam is, is the, like, the housing market is just, it's so, so, so awful. It's so awful. Um, like, it, it's just like, it's a seller's market. Landlords can get away with whatever they want over there. And so basically you have like 40 to 50 people applying for every single apartment that pops up every single day. And so your, your options are just like insane. They're insanely limited. I, I never thought, people told me it was bad. I didn't believe them. I did not believe them, and that was that was totally my fault. So eventually, when I got here, um, I'm now staying in a small town. I'm not going to give away what town I'm staying in because I don't want you guys to dox me. But basically, uh, I'm staying in a small town outside of Rotterdam, um, and I have since changed my goals and aspirations. I'm no longer looking to live in Amsterdam specifically. I am quite happy living in Rotterdam. Um, and so, <laughs> I actually, I, okay... If, if the, if, I, I, this is not going to do good for me beating the insane person allegations, but I need to tell you guys another story that goes along with this. So, for about two straight weeks, I was doing nothing but applying to apartments. I applied to about, in total, 250 apartments over the course of two weeks. I had gotten maybe, maybe six viewings. Maybe. 
And so uh, things were getting a little dire for me, right? There, because again, I can only, I have to, I have, I'm on a clock, right? I'm on a clock. I can only be here maximum 90 days, and then I'm sent back to America. Um, that is it. Um, and so, basically, uh, I was like starting to get a little nervous, right? Like a little nervous. Uh, maybe I was too American. Maybe I didn't make enough money for them. It could be anything. Usually renters in this country ask that you earn three times the price of rent in order to be able to live in any apartment, which I, I, I don't know if that's a... It's not... In theory, no one should be paying that much, right? Like, no one, nobody should be paying more than three times their average income in rent, right? But in practice, it leads to this horribly messed up market where it, it like basically you're just completely at the mercy of whether or not the landlord is like a reasonable person i did not get the skill point why did i not get the skill point um hmm well that's interesting um i think i know what went wrong i have to reload again um and so Basically, I was doing this one viewing, right? I, I I went to this viewing. It was on a Friday night. I canceled stream to go to it. I travel an hour and a half all the way to this viewing. Um, and I, I meet this one guy who's dressed uh, in like, you know, a, a pretty formal attire, right? And uh, I, at first I thought he was the real estate agent because, you know, he looked like he would be a real estate agent. But he looked really nervous, and I very quickly realized that, that... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm sorry. I know... I actually know what went wrong with the skill point this time. I have to quit to XMB. I have to quit to XMB. Um, that's the, the mistake that I made before. I forgot that you have to do that if you mess up on PlayStation 3 specifically. Uh, no, guys. I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking that I missed a guy. I, I missed zero guys. I'm 100% positive of it. You guys just have to understand that on PS3... Things break all the time. Um, you have to be very careful with how you do certain things. And if it doesn't go the way that you need it to go, you have to quit the game. Otherwise, it's going to mess up everything for the rest of the run. Um, so, uh, basically, I met this guy, right? And, and he looked really nervous. Um, and so I was like, hey, what's up? And I very quickly find out that he is not the, the real estate agent. He is the only other person who has been invited to this, this viewing alongside of me. And the viewing is scheduled for 7.40, right? 7.40 p.m. It's about 7.35. He's really nervous because he's German. He, he came there six hours by train from Germany. And he's like, I'm going to be freaking out if, if this person doesn't show up. I'm like, I'm, I'm already like so nervous. Why isn't anybody here? And I'm like, damn, this dude's really freaking out. And so like, I just, I just start talking to him. I'm like, okay, I'm going to defuse the situation because like, Number one, he looks like he's going through it. And number two, I don't want to have to deal with this nervous energy the entire time myself, right? And so I just start talking to him, right? And, and we get along super well, right? Um, and we're talking. It turns out that he's like, he, he like loves America, which is so ironic. Like, how ironic is it that boy who leaves his home country of America <laughs> strikes up a conversation with the one person who loves America most in all of Europe? Um... And so we're chit-chatting, we're, we're having a conversation, and uh, basically the, the, the landlord just never shows up. And so we're like, okay, what the, what the actual hell is going on here? We get in touch with somebody who owns the property, or like, uh, it, you know, is at least familiar with the property, and he informs us that the apartment had been rented out two days ago and the landlord never told us. So we were infuriated because we both wasted our entire days going to this apartment viewing, right? And so he is really upset. Like he is so mad about this whole thing. And I'm like, you know, I'm kind of mad, but I've been through some disappointment in my life. This is not the worst of it for me, you know? And so I'm so I start talking to him. I'm like, hey man, why don't we just grab dinner? Like, we've already been talking, and it's clearly, like, we're both having a good time. Let's just grab some dinner. And so, uh, we end up grabbing dinner. And dinner turns into, like, walking around Rotterdam together. 
and then it turns into us sitting down at a park bench by the Rotter like one of the rivers or uh, canals in Rotterdam having a life chat for three straight hours and by the end of it we're both like like all of our troubles have been washed away just by like by like getting to meet each other and hang out and have a great time and and he looks at me tenderly deep in the eyes and he says man I know this is crazy but why don't we just live together Skill point? Yes, there we go. Skill point. See, I told you guys how to reset the, uh, the restart the game, but now we finally got the skill point and we're out of here. And so he's like, "Why don't, why don't we just live together? We both clearly have the same goals. We get, we get in common super well, and financially speaking, it makes more sense for us to go at it as a team, and that way we can afford more expensive apartments and have more options in front of us." And I was like, "Screw it." Why the hell not? And so um, we started applying and, and here's okay. Here's the part where I have to I, I have to um, hold on. Wait, I just have to figure out where I'm going here. So Joba Race Wrench Ninja 2. Oh, I screwed up on Davo. I screwed up. I, I OK, I was talking so much that I forgot to do something for the actual run itself. Bear with me for a moment. So um, that's not where the story ends. It, it's actually quite funny. As we were talking about this, we were, we were strategizing, right? And we were like, okay, we can't exactly tell a landlord how we met and why we're applying together, right? Because he'll just think we're crazy people. And so we came up with a plan. We decided we would market ourselves as a couple. <laughs> we were like, we were like, it makes sense, right? Because like, it's not as if people are going to question us, you know? They're not going to be like, oh, well, you two have to kiss in front of us to prove you're a couple, right? That, that would be an insane thing to do. And so we're, we decided we're going to pretend to be a couple, and that way we can market ourselves as people with stability, right? Two friends... Can I? Yes, can yeah, I go ahead. You, you off for a second? This yes. This is a sitcom situation. I just want to point this out here. I mean, you are describing a sitcom. Wait, go ahead. <laughs> so, so, so we were like, okay, it, it makes total sense, right? Because like, if, if you're applying as friends, some people might be dissuaded by that, right? Because like, two random people who just moved here, out of out of their home countries, like anything could happen. There's a lot of turbulence, but a couple, a couple provides stability. Marketing yourselves as a couple, that is the way. All right, and so. We we decided to do that and just you know say to hell with it right and just see what would happen. Our success rate skyrocketed overnight, literally overnight. It, it went from both of us having about ten percent success rate on like converting applications to in person viewings. It turned from ten percent to roughly sixty percent almost overnight. It worked out incredibly. And so we started taking all of these uh, apartment listings and all these viewings and things like that. And uh, I am very, very happy to say that after like two straight weeks of racking our brains, panicking, trying to get all this stuff done, that we finally locked down an apartment in the heart of Rotterdam. It is a beautiful apartment. Um, it's, it's only like a 20 minute walk away from the rock climbing gym that I want to go uh, train at. It's, it's like... It's so well connected to the transit system as well. I mean, you can go anywhere in the Netherlands and be connected to the transit system, but still, uh, it's very well connected, and, and it's just like, it's it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so sick. It's so sick. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy to say that, like, after all of this turbulence, um, I'm going to be able to start my, my new, crazy, insane life in the Netherlands. Um... So my plan is to be here at minimum one year, maybe two, and then just kind of see what happens from there. You know, I don't really have any set plans. I just kind of want to like, like, uh, I don't know, just see what life has in store for me. And, and I think gamers, the, the moral that I have in all of this is, um, if you, if you are unhappy with your life, if you are unsatisfied with the way that things are going in your life, you don't have to make insane changes like I made. Right, you, don't, you really actually don't have to. Um, but however, what I do recommend is it, it's not about where you are. It's not even about what you're doing. It's about 
it's about making a choice. It's about saying, I am going to do this thing come hell or high water. And, and just seeing it through to its conclusion. I, I mean, I think so many people just are afraid of, 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 of the, like, the randomness of it all, you know? Like, what if things go wrong, right? But what if things go correctly? What if things not only go, like, well, but better than you could have ever imagined? You, you, you can't, if you want to be someone different than who you currently are, you have to do something you've never done before. So that's my advice to you all. If, if you all feel stuck in your lives and you feel like it would take an insane option to, to, to get yourself out of that rut, I mean, what do you have to lose? You know, as long as you plan it carefully and, and allow enough wiggle room for, for life to happen, you know, why the hell not? So I, 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 I've been yammering on and on long enough. Uh, I should probably talk a little bit about the game. So what I'm doing right now is... Um, I am grinding for Raritanium. Uh, we call this the Gorn Grind, even though we're on a planet called Frugus Cloud. Uh, we call this the Gorn Grind because we normally do this on planet Gorn, but I'm doing this on, you know, this is like a new way of doing this Raritanium Grind. So I don't think it's actually faster than the Gorn Grind. I'm going to challenge the Gorn authorities here. Um, I don't think this is actually faster, but I'm doing this right now to get enough of a sample size. I need 60 Raritanium. 60 is the magic number, um, and then it will allow me to buy the nuke. So we're just going to be doing this for a little bit. And while I'm doing this, guys, let me ask you something. Do you have? I, I want to read out chat questions or comments or things like that. Do you guys have any questions about this game? About uh, anything you just heard of my insane, stupid, crazy life? Um, actually, you know what? While you guys are, are thinking about that, I just want to tell you guys, I was miserable for the last three years of my life before moving here. Like I was utterly, I was utterly and completely miserable. Um, I, I was stuck in a town I didn't want to be in. I, 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 I felt like a rudderless boat. And ever since I've moved here, I have never felt happier in my entire life. And I, like, I even understand that things will get tough sometimes, but I'm willing to accept the challenges. You know, I'm will embrace, accept the challenges of life, chat, so that you may feel the thrill of victory. Anyway. What do you guys have to say? Hey, Sam, I got a question. What are you going to sing at the wedding? Could you demonstrate for us? I will not be demonstrating what I will be singing at the wedding. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I said I was going to be singing at a wedding earlier, right? Um, it's my first time singing professionally in three years. I'm very scared, but I'm also very excited. Um, I'm worried I'm going to do a bad job, but I'm just going to do my best. Uh, I will not be singing for you because it is 11 o'clock at night, and I this is not my apartment. So I, I'm in an Airbnb right now. And so I'm not going to do that. However, um, if the timing is right, you can you can feel free to come to my stream. And I take song requests. So, you know, I take song requests. Um, what all do you need to do for max percent? Every single thing that carries between playthroughs. So all weapons upgraded to the max, all skill points, all platinum bolts. Um, uh, all upgrades, all mods, basically just the platinum trophy with a couple of extra steps. What's the best food you've eaten over in the Netherlands? Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna blow your guys' mind here. So, uh, the Netherlands is a country that still has territories. Um, and one of its territories is a, a little spot in South Africa, or South America called Suriname. I don't know if that's the actual pronunciation. I, I, I say Suriname because I'm, I'm American-pilled. Um, but... Surinamese, or, or would you just say Suriname food? Food from Suriname is so delicious. It is, oh my god, it's amazing. It's essentially like, imagine Indian food, like the flavor and, and, the, and the taste and the richness of the sauces and the spices, but it's not spicy at all. Like, it doesn't hurt your mouth to eat it. it, it it's just, it's so... It's so delicious. It's so, so, so good. That's easily the best food I've had here so far. Um, I would say close seconds. Um, I've had great Indian food here. Uh, I have had, I have yet to have donor. I want to have donor pizza at some point uh, on, a, on, a, on a Friday night where I'm kind of roaming around the town and, and having a good time, if you know what I mean. 
I want to go out and uh, and and experience some donor pizza. That sounds so so delicious. Oh, it's been ten years since I've had donor kebab, and I am foaming at the mouth for the chance to go back. So, um, I what else has been really good here? I've enjoyed the breads. Anything with, with like like I don't know. It's like it's so impossible to say because like. You people, you Europeans have no idea how good you have it. American food is so disgustingly low quality. Like, Americans don't even realize it if they've never left the country, but our food is disgusting. It's loaded with, with corn syrup and added sugars, and it's so unnatural. And, and the process for how the food is made, it's just so disgusting. In Europe, they have so many more restrictions when it comes to their food. The bread is higher quality, the cheese is higher quality, and it's cheaper. The meat, oh my god, the meat. The most delicious food I've ever had that, like, outside of Surinam food is the steaks that I've cooked for myself. Lightly spiced. I barely put anything in them, uh, but I sear, like, I pan seared them medium rare, added some salt, like a healthy amount of salt, and, and, and a little bit of aromatic spice, and it was like... It, it was it was mind-blowingly good. It the only meat I've ever had that has ever tasted better was A5 Wagyu that I had in New York City. That's it. That's the only meat I've had that's more delicious. Like you guys are seriously so spoiled. You, like I hope all of you European people never take your food quality for granted because it, it is just like I could eat this food for the rest of my life. I really seriously could. Um so, yeah, I, I went on kind of a very impassioned tangent right there, but I, I'm just such a foodie. Food is such an important part of, of, of like, you know, I, it's just very important to me. I mean, it's obviously important to all of us, but, like, culturally, I love food. I love the, the ways that we connect and, and the ways that we grow to understand each other with, with the cuisine that we eat, you know? What's your favorite grocery store so far? Um, let me see, which ones have I been to here? Um, oh yeah, by the way, now I can buy the nuke, so we're done with the Gorn grind, and now we're gonna go on to Tadana. Um, I would say my favorite grocery store food, uh, grocery store so far... I mean, I feel like Albert Hein is like the, 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 the go-to, you can find anything at Albert Hein, right? But I'm, I'm partial to Aldi. I'm a little partial to Aldi, just because it, it, uh... It reminds me of my, uh, like, American roots a little bit. It, it, you know, just a, a little teensy tiny bit. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than Albert Hein as well, and the quality is just as good in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. Adderall, oh. Jesus. Uh, listen, listen, Deebs. If you're not here to watch an ADHD psychopath play a game made in the mid 2000s or the early 2000s for like ADHD psycho like uh, audiences this is not the right place for you but I, hey listen man we, we we'll get through this together i can even you know <laughs> at some point i'll also take my meds and maybe i'll calm down a little bit <laughs> um, um real quick yeah. sorry go ahead um we're around the hour mark i'm not saying we have to take it right now but uh anytime we get to a good break point sure sounds good to me so what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to sheep these squirrels. I'm going to turn them into sheep because I'm going to need them for a skill point later. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a little uh, proxy right here. Now that I have the charge boots and the decoy glove, I can proxy wherever I so choose. Well, as long as the angle is sloped. But that's beside the point. Let me get this sheep as well. Um, and once I am finished with this planet, we can take our break. And I'm good. Welcome. Uh, so yeah, everybody, just during these longer runs, uh, we like to take breaks so we can get up, stretch, get some water, anything like that they need to do, you know, just try to keep yourselves healthy. Uh, real quick before we go to the break, just a quick reminder, uh, Games Done Quick is hiring. If you are a business developer or have experience in recruiting sponsorships, and would like to work for GDQ, uh, you can go to gamesgoingquick.com slash jobs to apply. Uh, with that said, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back in just a few more minutes with more of the run. Great. All 
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. Today, we are showcasing a run of Ratchet and Clank going commando. We've got Zem here. I'll hand it right back over to you, Zem, and whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm taking a little snack break. Uh, Kinder Milk Shifia. I think that's how that's pronounced. You guys have that over here? You guys have so much random Kinder stuff here. It's delicious. Kinder is God. great. I wish we had more of it. I do too, frankly. Um, but yeah, so guys, we are gamers. We are now in uh, the heat of a Ratchet and Clank 2 Platinum Trophy speedrun. Um, and I am now going to see if the nanotech is over here, which it is. Let's go. This is the this nanotech right here is the reason why no one plays this category in English anymore. We always play it in Japanese. Uh, and the reason being, uh, oh yeah, by the way, you can just clip through that dome. Um, <laughs> sorry. In case you guys were wondering, you can just kind of clip through that thing. It doesn't really matter. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. On American, uh, or, well, at least on the American version of the game, the one that I'm playing on right now, that only happens on alternating hours. So on, I think it's odd hours, it shows up, and then on even hours, it doesn't. It's really stupid. Anyway, if you play it on Japanese, uh, it's always there. So you never have to worry about it. Um, okay, so now we're in a really fun clank section, and I, I cannot wait to show you how busted this is. So, we go over here, we're gonna put clank in this little corner, we're gonna put baby in the corner for a second, and we're gonna clip through wall number one. And remember, the way this is working is, this, these are camera clips. So, the camera is an actor with physical properties in this game, and we can use said camera to just punch uh, Clank through walls that he's not supposed to be able to punch through. So I did this one wrong. Let me try it again. Uh, did the devs patch this? You guys know if the devs patched this while I wasn't looking? Okay, I know what's happening here. It's because I'm doing it too late. There we go. And now for the third one. This one's one of my favorites. You launch yourself up in the air. Go over here. And then the final clank clip of the section. We go over to here. And we just push clank right through. And that's how you beat the entire clank section. It's just wall clip, wall clip, wall clip, or wall clip, wall clip, wall clip, proxy, wall clip. Bang, 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 bang. Knocking them out one at a time. Uh, this is a really wild section. It's actually one of my favorite sections in the entire uh, run because I have been doing this strategy like. There's some strategies in this category that are optimal that we, like, you have to kind of reach into the dark archives of Ratchet 2 speedrunning to know how to do them properly. And so this is one of those dark arts, okay? Like, this is a strat that we used to do back in, like, 2017. Okay, if I can actually please get this strat first. This isn't even the hard one. Um, give me just a second here, okay, gamers? Give me just a second. All right, let me line this up. There we go. How to actually use my brain for a second. Um, so th this is some really dark technology um, that I'm about to show you. So please make sure that you use it safely. Do not use it under the influence of alcohol. Do not operate heavy machinery when you try to use these dark arts. And especially make sure that you're not pregnant or around uh, children. Okay? It's, it's very, very dangerous. So we're going to go into here. We're going to start by throwing a couple of bombs to clear the enemies in both canisters. Um, and then we're going to throw a decoy down here, lightly tap up as we double jump hyper strike. And we're going to do this again. So right there, lightly tap up, double jump hyper strike. Now, this, that's not the hard part. This is the hard part. It's very, very easy to die right there. But of course, because I have known how to properly handle the dark arts for a long time now, I handle it with extreme care and precision. And we are out of there. So now one little thing, we're about to reload the game to get Clank. But first, we want to go over here and just drop down here. And then we're going to pick up the Platinum Bolt. Did you guys know there was a Platinum Bolt there? I'm sure most of you did, but did you know you could get it that way? I'm sure most of you did. So now we're going <laughs> to reload. Um, and so we will have Clank now, um, which I think we did have him for a while, but we lost him on Aranos. They get split up, you know? And I want another bite of this Kinder bar. Ugh. 
it's so light and so like spongy. It's such a strange texture. Mm. Very messy too. It looks too. like ice cream. It does. It's basically as close to an ice cream sandwich as I've ever found that is not an ice cream sandwich. That sounds okay, let's... absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's good. I also recommend it with milk. I think that's like the, the pairing you're supposed to do. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm too much of a savage to drink milk. Okay, let's see here. So, no, please. Why? Why do bad things happen to good people? Okay, so uh, I made an oopsie, a little oopsie poopsie. I accidentally bonked. You don't want to bonk. Bonking is bad. In this game, bonking is almost always bad. The white part is more foamy than ice cream. Ain't that the gosh darn truth, Alex? Ain't that the gosh darn truth? So I had to reload on decoys right there. I was going to have to reload eventually anyway, but it's not really that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, guys, okay, so I have to do this thing because these days I'm trying to grow, like, I'm trying to be much more serious about growing my social media in all ways and not just in the way of being a Ratchet and Clank streamer. Um, if you guys have enjoyed any of this so far, make sure you follow my socials. You can just do me a solid, you know? It takes a couple seconds. You can just just follow me on Twitch and just and, and maybe subscribe to my YouTube if you enjoy my videos, all right? The Twitch one is so easy. It's like a click of a button, you know? Um, but yeah, like, just do me a solid if you've been enjoying this and you want to and you want to help boost my content to wider audiences. Um, we're really, really trying to break, especially into the Platinum Trophy space right now. Um, I am very fortunate to say that I had my first... Uh, this year, I had my first video that ever hit over a million views. Um, it was a video on getting the God of War Platinum Trophy uh, in less than a week. Which took me a while. Uh, it, took, it took a lot of effort. Um, but of course, the reason why it blew up algorithmically is because by, the title of my video is that I called it exhausting. And... I, it was because I did it on the hardest difficulty. That's why it took me so long, right? And uh, basically, like, 90% of all the comments are people, like, telling me that I'm just, like, terrible at video games and that I'm, like, a worthless piece of garbage who should, who should just, like, go away forever. That's, like, literally half the comments. I swear to God. And at first, I was like, damn, these people are really mean. <laughs> but then, but then, I realized the power of rage baiting. <laughs> It turns out if there's hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people telling you in your comment section that you're absolute garbage at video games, it populates your video to other people who will call you garbage at video games. And so it's insane. I just have all these comments telling me that I'm just like a worthless pile of garbage, but the video has almost 2 million views now. <laughs> Oh my god, bro, this dude loves talking about himself. You'll find, JD, that most people in this world enjoy talking about themselves. It that sounds like more of a you issue than a me issue. I'm I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you, dude. Um Okay, so uh here we are on Snivelac. I'm going to now go for another skill point here. And as you and you guys know what I did right there? I even incurred some more rage baiting right there by having that piece of feedback given to me and then calling that person a monkey. <laughs> calling them a chimpanzee, you know? That's, that's what you gotta do. But then again, that's also a term of endearment in some ways, you know? I call my chat chimps all the time and they love it. Zemi typers in chat if you feel like a chimp, all right? Zemi typers if you're a proud chimp. Um, so yeah, this skill point is a little bit of a weird one. Um, this is basically just shoot down like 16 uh, ships and you get the skill point uh, along with the trophy. It just says that you're here, really here to talk about yourself and not talking about the game. It can be a healthy mix of the two. Listen, this is this is uh, the way that I do these GDQ runs. Um, it basically like I just try to keep it as if I were as if it were like one of my streams. You know, if you like the vibe of this, you like my streams. If not, then you know my content's just not for you. You know that that's just the way it is. And that's fine. That's fine. That's just life, right? But anywho, I get a trophy for that. 
I'm gonna move on because I said I would only get one guide once, and I, I don't want to get one guide again and break my promise. So, uh, we are now heading over to the Snivelak boss. And let me tell you something about the boss, all right? Let me tell you a little something. The boss is... This is a very strange boss fight. Um, this is not the way that most boss fights in this series are done. Um, basically, we're going to utilize a, a, a trick here called poking. Um, now, poking is something... I haven't seen this in a lot of games, but it's something... So I don't want to call it something unique to Ratchet, but it's certainly, like, rare in a video game, right? What happens is, in, when we poke, we shove Ratchet's model... That's going to break the bridge. Okay. We shove Ratchet's model into an enemy, more specifically the gun model. Um, you shove the gun model into the enemy, and it basically creates some really wonky properties. So... Normally, if you're doing this boss casually, this boss takes about, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how comfortable you, comfortable you are with the, uh, the way this boss fight's supposed to work. But with poking, as you can see, his, his health bar is just getting absolutely annihilated. So we land on this bridge, we start firing him with the Lancer, and what's happening at the same time is that uh, while we're shooting him with the Lancer, he's also shooting himself with his little eye lasers. And the eye lasers are doing most of the damage, but we're enabling the eye laser damage by shooting him with the Lancer so much. So this 15 minute boss fight turns into like a 60 second like slug fest um, of just shooting him right in the family jewels. And then we're able to move on. So onwards to Smolg we go. Um, See if you can find any more new All right, so then on a Smolg, remember those swing shot proxies that looked really, really cool? I think I only did one of them so far, but you're about to see another one. You're about to see another one right over here. So I gotta equip the swing shot. Gotta put myself over here. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to do this one yet. Uh, let me do a different property. These are called... Uh, this is called <laughs> Swing Shot Swag, but it's spelled a very specific way. Um, if anybody could do me a favor and find the correct spelling of Swing Shot Swag. Basically, Swing Shot Swag is a trick that we made in, like... 2015 back when it was really funny to call things swag um but yeah you essentially uh like charge into a, a swing shot node and then latch onto it with the swing shot and keep all of your momentum which allows you to kind of like you know hover all the way over to that one place that you saw me doing before by the way you're not supposed to be able to go up this rail this is a grind rail that's supposed to go backwards um but we can just do this. It's hard to explain why and how this works. With Ratchet and Clank, there's just a lot of things that happen at once. Um, and if I... If I had... If there was a run that was long enough to give us enough time to explain every interaction and why it works the way it does, we would need to be here for 10 hours. So there's going to be some stuff that I'm going to have to just kind of burn through and you're just going to kind of have to follow along. It's not a very beginner friendly uh, speedrun explanation wise, but the best part about these games is that they're very beginner friendly from a viewer perspective. Like, you don't have to understand what's happening to know that it's really cool to watch. And that's my favorite part. You could be totally new to this whole series and be like, damn, that was sick. And then like, you know, that's all it takes. You're hooked. Uh, okay, so Zem, could you by chance give me the name of this planet? Yes, the planet I was just on was called Smolge. Uh, don't let the spelling of S-M-O-L-G try to convince you that it's pronounced Smolg. It's actually pronounced Smolge. Uh, but here I am on Grelbin. I'm about to do something called the Protopet Grind. Um, so I just bought this, this weapon called the Spiderbot Glove. And this Spiderbot Glove, we have to level it up to the Tankbot Glove. In order to do that, we're going to use these little Protopets right here. These give more experience than anything else in the entire game, if you can believe it. But it's not because of, like... Like, as you can see, I've already made significant progress on this, but that's not even the true power of this grind, alright? I'm gonna show you after I reload. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come up here, I'm going to drop a decoy down, I'm gonna clip through this wall, and then I'm going to... Uh get my happy little butt over here and pick up this platinum bolt, okay? 
Then we're going to reload. And the reloading is the important part because for whatever reason, there's a lot of levels that after you complete them and reload them, enemies will give you more experience than they did previously. I, I actually think it only happens in maybe a couple spots in the entire game. And I think most of them are on Gorn or on Grelbin where we are right now. But the most time efficient one are these little proto pets for whatever reason they get like triple the normal amount of xp it's crazy i don't know if that's exactly what it is again source trust me bro um but like check this out i'm gonna drop this over here and look at the experience bar it's about to go through the roof and that was after only a few enemies so i'm hoping i didn't just blow up most of those guys i think i didn't i should be fine here so I'm going to drop these here, and that should upgrade it all the way to the max, I think. Nearly to the max. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I am going to have to take... I accidentally used too many nanotech blasts to blow up too many protopets, so it wasn't as efficient as I wanted it to be. Um, but as you can see, the tank bot glove is almost fully upgraded, and I'm just going to have to blow up maybe one or two more enemies on my way over through, uh, through Yeetle. So this is the end of the first playthrough of the game, but because this is max percent, we have to do another playthrough after this. So, you know, just because we're on the last level here does not mean that I'm about to end this like two and a half hours underestimate, okay? We're gonna be here for a little bit. So just go with me. Okay, so uh, now what I need to do first and foremost is I need to collect the platinum bolt that's over here. And we're gonna do this in a really cool way. So check this out. So we're going to proxy up here. No, that's not a proxy. Come on. You can do it. There we go. We launch ourselves upwards and we grab that bull. I didn't mean to grab the grind rail on the way down, but whatever. It's fine. So now we still need to upgrade the tank bot glove. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to blow up these guys. And that should upgrade it. Close. Very, very close. Okay, hold on. Maybe these. Even closer, if you can believe it. Okay, I got the continue point, which is fine. That means I can do this without having to worry about being killed. Uh, That should... Can this please upgrade anytime this year? Thank you. Are you kidding me? You have to be kidding me. Okay, wait, hold on. This can work. This can work. Hold. Beautiful. All right, we got it. We got the tank bot glove. We're in the clear. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called, uh, well, I already showed you camera clips with Clank, but I never showed you camera clips with a ratchet. You can do the exact same thing. You can use the camera to shove him right through that wall. You have to just hyper strike backwards out of a charge. Um, and it's, it just works, you know, it just works. Um, okay. So now at this point, this is a relatively new strategy I'm about to show you. So we have to climb all the way up and clip through a wall. So we're going to just kind of, uh, what are these even called? Like, in Ratchet 1, they're called Bomb Glove Proxies, but I think they're they're just like, what, deep, like... Do we just call them Bomb Glove Proxies again, even though it's not the Bomb Glove? Like, what do we call them? <laughs> I, I need a name. Somebody please, for the love of God. <laughs> What's the name? What's the name? I got nothing on a name! <laughs> um, okay, so now at this point, I gotta clip through the canister right here. Uh, that's scary. Please clip me through. Uh, I'm saved. Okay, great. So now I'm going to go over here. There's a platinum bolt right over here. You're definitely not supposed to grab it this way, but I, you know, I just grabbed it right that way. Oh, camera proxies. Thank you. Yeah, we got proxies for everything nowadays, you know? This is it. The is this live? Yes, it is, Kappa Dog. Uh, it didn't let me skip the cutscene right there. I had to fight the cutscene, uh, skip boss fight right there. So now we're on the final boss of the game. Okay, wait a second. Actual, serious, unironic seizure warning. If you are sensitive to flashing lights, please do not look at the screen for the next 60 seconds. I will tell you when it's safe to look. I'm not kidding. Like this is dead serious. I know I'm a goofy guy. This is a real warning. I have to look at this. You all don't have to. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to throw one tank bot swap to the sheepinator and throw another tank bot and it allows me to do this to the boss's health bar watch his face cam oh my god shut up Rue. i always look so embarrassing like when, when i'm doing that but yeah that's the final boss fight 
Um, it's it's uh, <laughs> not fun to look at. Uh, challenge mode. Yes, we're going to go to challenge mode. Okay, so now we're done with the first playthrough. We did it in record time of however long it took. I'm not looking at the clock. Uh, don't I tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. An <laughs> amount of time. Yeah. So now we're on playthrough number two. And playthrough number one, I'm going to be real with you guys, okay? Playthrough number one, yeah, it's fine. All right. There's nothing really that cool about playthrough one. Like, so if you guys already enjoyed playthrough one, you're going to love playthrough number two. This is where things get insane because of one very specific thing that we can do here to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, you so can, first you can look at the screen now, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot to say you, you guys are safe to look at the screen now. Um, if you double jump and go into first person mode in the specials menu, you can just climb walls. Th this is like a thing that you can do. Um, why? I don't know, but yeah, uh, it's only, it's, it's exclusive to Ratchet 2. It got patched out so fast in Ratchet 3 to make your head spin. But yeah, we can use it to just like climb whatever the hell we want. It's actually not that powerful, I will say. It makes certain things really convenient and really easy. Uh, however, it's not as broken as you might think because... It's oftentimes more broken to just go through the level quickly uh, with the charge boots and all the different charge boot technology that we have. So uh, now using these charge boots, I have the, the, the golden bomb glove, and this is the most broken weapon in the game. I'm not even kidding. For a, a weapon that's only 1,000 bolts will shred pretty much every significant health bar you can possibly think of. Oh my god, I'm cringing and crapping and crying and pooping my pants right now. Okay. Um, I need to get up on top of this mountain, and then I need to go over to this mountain. Thank you very much. I'll now pull out the Lancer, shoot four of these chickens. Uh, okay. I'm not, I never said I was known for my aim, okay? I never said I was known for my aim. All right, now we're going to go over to here. Oh, that's not good. Maybe I can still make this work. Okay, great. Uh, we're going to stay in first person mode for a hot second here. And now we're going to climb up. And uh, I can I can just be right here. And we're going to charge over to here. And now we find the platinum bolt. Just like that. So uh, those are the... or That's like the most out of the way platinum bolt, I would say. Um... But there's still another platinum bolt that we have to get. Okay, there's still another one that we have to get. Uh, oh, I see you guys are still pog bonesing. Yeah, I forgot to like keep you guys honest about that. I hope you guys have been pog bonesing after every trophy. There is going to be like a, a thorough examination of this Twitch chat after the fact. Uh, and anybody who hasn't been properly pog bonesing will be perma banned. So you know, not trying to threaten you guys. It's more of a promise than anything else. Um, oh wait, sorry. Hold on. I'm getting I'm getting word from my lawyer. I am legally obligated to tell you that I have no jurisdiction over who is and is not permabanned, and you should not listen to anything I say. That is my disclaimer. But, you know, what? Are, who needs a disclaimer these days? You know what I mean? Like, source, trust me, bro. That, that's all you really need in this world, okay? Uh, okay, so now that we've done all the collectibles on the side, I can now finish this level the intended way by hopping through all these trees. You guys remember this part of the game, right? Where you hop through all the trees? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all remember this part. So, yeah, we're just going to charge down over here, and then we're just going to skip the entire level by doing this. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I said I was going to have more chat interactivity, and basically the only people that I've been giving the, the my time and attention to are people who I've been getting one guide by. So I, I genuinely, unironically want to know if you all have any questions about what it is you're seeing so far. Um, any questions that have just been on the back of your brain, I'm here to answer them. You can go ahead and ask me anything you want, anything, and I have to answer it, and I will answer it correctly. <laughs> Sam, how's so, your day going? Oh, it's going fantastically. How about you, Church? Oh, you know, it's going good. I've got, uh, I, I woke up and I have this, and it's been going great, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's pretty, that's actually, like, kind of awesome. 
You know, that's that's the way every Sunday should be. Wake, wait, wait, which uh, are you in the uh, the Eastern time zone or the Western time zone? I'm in Eastern. It, it, I woke up at three thirty. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. So you're on like the real degenerate grind. Damn, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's not great. Um. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, all that aside, we'll have a conversation about that after the fact, church. You know, we got, <laughs> we'll we'll keep up appearances for the for the for the people. But <laughs> um, but yeah. So okay, do you do the secret bosses in this playthrough? Yes, we will be doing the secret bosses. What's the best European snack you've had so far? Oh man, that's hard to even say. Um, oh, there's just oh, can I tell you guys? Can I tell you guys, the, the, the most magical experience I've had so far with, with what I've had in Europe? Chocomel. We do not have Chocomel in America. And there was a there was a night when I was out with with a friend, and you know, we were we were having a great night, if you know what I mean. You know, I've I've, I've alluded to this already. I, we were having a great night. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Alright? And he said. You have to try Chocomel. And I said, whatever, dude. Like, listen, American candy isn't that bad. It's not like our chocolate milk is gonna, like, there's no way European chocolate milk could be that much better than American chocolate milk, right? And and let me tell you, at, at first, when I when I drank the Chocomel, it was like, uh, it was like nothing special at first. You know, I was just like, ah, oh, whatever. And, and then, and then, and then it was like, and the taste just like, it, it's like it's settled. It's like it settled on my tongue and just refused to go away, and it and it got like and like every swig of chocomel that I took, the taste kept getting richer and richer, and it and it was it was it was amazing. So I would say so far my my like most cathartic experience with uh, snacks in in Europe has been chocomel, but I mean like I, I feel like I like everything that I've tried has just been so good. Zem, are you going commando right now? My my legal team has advised me not to answer this question. Um, my, that's uh, I'm sorry, Smooch. I'm gonna have to disappoint you on that one. Um, Zem, my question for you: You are very handsome. How can I do that? Okay, so Bride Gear, here's what you have to do. First off, when you like, so you know how you've lowered your standards for my sake when you look at me in order to call me, uh, like you know, in order to like comment on my attractiveness. All, oh, I just blew myself up with a bomb. All you have to do is just like take that same like like energy and just like look at, apply it to yourself every time you're looking at yourself in the mirror. And I'm not trying to say that you're ugly. What I'm trying to say is handsomeness is in confidence, okay? You, like if you are a person who is sure of themselves, even if you even if you just sound like you're sure of yourself, people will innately find you more amicable and and more pleasant to be around. So that's 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 my, my advice. <laughs> um, can you do a Pikmin impression? I don't even know what Pikmin sound like. I I, I don't really play. I've never played a, a single Pikmin game. I've never picked a man before. Okay, I've never picked one. Zem, I love you. Do you love me? Okay. Uh, Orso Kun, that's extremely parasocial of you. Uh, and we got our <laughs> we got Bolt Scavenger too. I'm just. <laughs> I love like calling out social or parasocial behaviors that chat has from time to time um, And sometimes I roll with it and sometimes I just make fun of people so like just understand that like Anytime I say anything that sounds extremely opinionated. There's like a 50% chance. I'm just I'm just messing with you um, I, I like to I like to balance my range that way, you know, keep you guys guessing um, Can I please get some bomb ammo per chance? Like just, just like as a treat. Thank you. Where can I get right. an education? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Church. No, you go ahead. You ask me. Or you, you answer yours. Uh, no. Someone was just asking me where can I get education for free. Well, you can get connected for free at edu. Oh, what was it? What's the song? Um, uh, looking, for, looking for an hourly working for an hourly wage. Education connection. That's what it is. Yeah, you go to. You can go to education connection. <laughs> Um, anyway, I'm sorry. That's this is a really stupid tangent. Go ahead, Church. Uh, well, um, I have just learned I, it, w with your incredible endorsement. I've looked it up. Apparently, they're out of Choco Mel regular, but they have dark Choco Mel that I could order from an import store. Dude, I cannot what, what? even be. 
I could not even begin to imagine how good dark chocolate chocomel would taste. You have to try All right. it. All right, that's uh, I will I will order this later. All right, uh, the second one. Apparently, I've got a question from chat. Okay, um, what's what up? Is my favorite game that as I've seen speedrun uh, from my time with GDQ. That is an incredibly difficult answer. Um, I have seen a lot of good speedruns. Um, I so the the biased answer would be the Grinch. Uh, run by one church and Sarge. Um, <laughs> uh, besides that, I don't know. Like we have a lot of good content, so um, yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, the one that comes to mind right now is uh, there was this uh, Ratchet and Clank going commando run uh, by uh, Zem ninety two. I think that was pretty good. I don't know. Sounds, sounds kind of like mid to me. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like kind of a cop out answer, but it's like I don't know. You know, it's. Well, I feel There's like that's so many what, that, good runs. God. That's what you should be doing, right? You should always be aiming to like marquee like runs that you think can elevate a show to the next level, right? At least that's the way that I always think of it with with YouTube videos. It's like no YouTube creator ever wants to put out something that like they think to themselves, ah, you know, I did better last video, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so I have to do the race skip again. That's not gonna work. I, I absolutely despise this race skip. I'm gonna be completely. I'm gonna keep it like a buck fifty with you all. I hate this skip with every fiber of my being, and I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna fully and wholeheartedly admit it. It's a skill issue. It's completely a skill issue. I just have no idea what I'm doing on this freaking thing. It's so annoying. Um, it, it's it's just like okay, that might work. No, I sometimes I get it really really quickly, and sometimes it takes me five minutes. So I'm just hoping that this isn't one of those instances. So, lap one, that's fine. Uh, that's not going to work. That, uh, that's probably a little bit too close to the right, or too far to the right. That might work. Yes, beautiful. And I think this is what I should be doing. Like, I keep trying to, like, YOLO it every time I think I got something that looks halfway decent. But I really should be a lot pickier with the, the ones that I take over to the, the end of the race. No, that was, I was angled, uh, I was angled poorly there. That's what that issue was. That might work. No. Zem, you're going the wrong way. You're right. I I'm sorry, Pyro. I, sh I should have known better. Yeah, too far to the right on that one. Again, if this is triple frame perfect, so, it, you know, stuff goes wrong sometimes. That might have actually worked. That did not work. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. So, let me tell you guys something. Uh, I alluded to this earlier before, but... Oh, nice. Okay, I beat it. Nice. Oh, wait, please tell me I did the right one. Yes, I did. Okay. You can actually uh, a accidentally, like, go into, like, oh, whoa. You guys okay over here? Ah, they're going to be fine. All right, so uh, you can accidentally do the wrong race is what I'm trying to get at here. So uh, now we're going on to Felton, and you're going to see something called Nuke Storage. Now, Nuke Storage used to be a frame-perfect trick, but then we found a non-frame-perfect setup, so it makes our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You fire the nuke, you blow up wave one, then as wave two comes in, the screen goes black, you pause, you choose challenge, you choose mission one again, you fire another nuke, blows up wave two, and you're good. And then, uh, oh, I should talk about this. So if you guys play this game casually, you will remember how annoying these races were. The, the race that I'm about to do right here. Um... If you're going to speedrun this game, you have to practice these a lot. Like, there's always a point in time where everybody has to practice this a lot. Um, and so, you know, basically the idea here is you have to go through every single ring. You're not allowed to miss any of them. Um, if you do, you have to restart the whole thing because you need to clear this without missing anything for a Platinum Bolt. Uh, this is the bane of a lot of people's existence. And yes, it is actually faster to... Uh, rapidly tap the square button and get little mini boosts than it is to hold down the square button and do a full boost. It's actually faster, if you can believe it. Um, God, for some reason I just got... Are there any David Lynch fans in the crowd? When I said if you could believe it, it reminded me of, of film director David Lynch. He, every Friday, he does like a weekly like weather update or something on his Twitter, and he's like... And, and he always starts it with like, hello, everybody. And if you 
can believe it. <laughs> it is a Friday once again. So I just got kind of psyoped into thinking about that. But anyway, we got the Platinum Bolt. Like I said, guys, there's going to be a lot of ADHD tangents. You just have to go with it, okay? Like, if, if you can't accept me at my ADHD tangent, you don't deserve me at my crushing world records underneath my cruel fist, okay? It's, this is the dichotomy, okay? There's a trade-off to everything in life. Oh, yeah, and he pronounced, yeah, slams, or slames. I don't know if it's supposed to rhyme with James or not. But anyway, yeah, he always says, he doesn't pronounce it Friday. He says Friday, you know? He's like, it is a Friday once again. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a skill point for doing that. That's like a really cool way of doing the skill point. Uh, and then here's some cool movement. Uh, oh, oh, my God, I almost just killed myself. <laughs> so, yeah, bro is yapping. Dude, I'm like mega yapping. This is what it's like. Like, seriously, this is what it's always like on my streams. It, it, like, I always try to, like, encourage new people to watch my streams, but I also understand there's a bit of, of, of like, mental overhead when it comes to watching me of, like, bro, what is this guy saying right now? But usually I'm a little bit more medicated than this, I, I swear. Um, could you by chance give me your view on skeletons? <laughs> I mean, what do you what do you want me to say? Like, like... Like, what even needs to be said about skeletons? Like, thank God skeletons are not real, you know? Like, if skeletons were real, I'd be so scared all the time. But, like, thankfully, they're they're both fake and imaginary, so not a big deal. Yeah, has anybody ever seen a skeleton? No. Yeah, like, come on. People, people say, like, they make up the craziest stuff. Like, somebody once unironically told me that there's a skeleton deep inside of me. And I was like, that sounds like skeleton propaganda to me, you know? Oh yeah, by the way, I just did a lot of cool movement there. Uh, I wanted to be very nonchalant about it because I spent about an hour practicing that specific section uh, just before I started this run today. Uh, I also practiced the heck out of this planet, so if I mess this up, I'm going to be very ashamed of myself. You what is that afterward? <laughs> yeah, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Okay, but it's fine. What is your opinion on birds? Okay, can I be real with you all for a second? There's no way there's that many birds, you know? Like, they say there's millions upon millions upon millions of birds, but have you ever seen them? Have you ever honest- can you tell me with honesty that you have seen that many birds in your life? There is no way there's that many, okay? There's something else happening over here. I, I don't know what- what's, like, I don't know what's going on exactly, you know, but like, there's just no way. Uh-oh, 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 I messed up. Simply. <laughs> what, Ray? What? what? <laughs> oh, what? So, so you want to silence the truth? <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't expecting them to go unhindered, but... <laughs> This, I mean, this is this is all just like a part of like like a greater like tale that I've been weaving over the last few years. There was a GDQ run where I denied the moon landing, so that like you know, it's like it's a little bit in I'm, character at this point. I I missed that one. I didn't realize this was a lore, a lore thing. <laughs> yeah, this, this is like listen, it's a canon event. You, you can you cannot interfere. Um, we need we need to have at least one ridiculous claim per show. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, in, in case you guys haven't noticed, you're not really supposed to be out here. Um, so, uh, what do I even say about this? I mean, I don't know, man. Like, what do you think you're looking at? <laughs> you know, like, this is just a goddamn mess. Um, but because of how crazy and insane and stupid this is, we can just land right here. And... Uh, we just make it all the way to the end. And if you can believe it, that's actually... W and if you can believe it, uh, that's way faster than doing this level normally. Um, so, yeah, it's a crazy skip, and I've gotten a lot better at it over the last day. <laughs> I practiced a lot. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't as clean as I wanted it to be, but it's a start, you know? Um, okay, so Tabora. So, Tabora is where things get a little funky. Um, so, do you remember the first playthrough of this game? It, it, it feels like it was years ago at this point, but 
Uh, in the first playthrough of this category, uh, I collected 10 crystals to uh, repair my ship and make it to the end of this level. Well, we don't really have to do that here, and I'll show you why. Um, oh, Zem, at the beginning of the run, you were starting to talk about the PS2 versus PS3 differences. Uh, this being a PS3 speedrun category, we got distracted by life and stuff. What was that about? A, a fantastic question, Captain Tinko. Let me let me learn you a thing or two here, chat, okay? So, there is uh, basically... Um, there's two systems that you can run Ratchet and Clank on, right? I mean, I guess technically speaking, you can run on the PS5, like, PlayStation Plus Premiere version, but don't do that. Uh, so we're going to use the shortcut to go now back to Barlow because it's actually faster to fly to Barlow, exit the race, and leave the planet from Barlow than it would be to collect 10 crystals. So we're going to do that. Anywho, um, PlayStation 2 is... Just generally speaking, the better experience to speedrun this game on. It's just better. Um, it's just the problem is PS3 is faster. Now, let me explain why this is an issue. On the PlayStation 2 version of the game, there is a ton of movement tech and glitches and different things that you can do that, like, make the game look completely insane. And unfortunately, on PS3, almost all of them were patched. Almost every single one. Uh, Insomniac said, no, 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 no fun allowed, and uh, and patched them. Now, I can't necessarily say I blame them because, you know, you want to make sure your games are working properly or whatever, you know? But um, basically, they all got patched out. And so even though the PS3 wins on load times, it loses on overall coolness of the categories. Um, at least in my opinion, of course, let me put that disclaimer. Some people disagree with me. Uh, you know, then again, some people also think that hot dogs are not sandwiches. So how much can you really believe people? Um, so basically on the PS3 version, there's another reason why PS3 is way, 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 way faster than PS2. And I'm going to show you what that is today. You guys might legitimately not even believe a, a glitch like this is even real. Like, it, it, uh, it's it's seriously going to look like I am cheating straight up. Like, it looks like we're just breaking the game wide open. That will be happening eventually. Um, for now, I need to go through, and I actually need to pull out my notes here because this is the point where I start to lose track of what I'm supposed to be doing. So I need to do Hrugus and then Tadano. Hrugus, Tadano, Bolden. Okay, Hrugus, Tadano, Bolden. Uh, so here we are going to be uh, destroying turrets. And I'm going to be doing uh, the more difficult version of nuke storage is what the trick is called. It's the trick that I did where I changed the mission and uh, it, it like blew up all those guys. I'm going to be doing another version of that that's even harder. It's like actually frame perfect. Um, but it's kind of swag with it, so I'm going to try this. All right, let's see here. That did not work. Let me try it again. Let me do it a little bit closer together. That did not work either. Maybe a little bit later. I'm new to this strategy. I just learned it. Okay, even earlier is what I need to do then. Um, so what I'm trying to do is... I'm tr oh, there it is. I finally got it. So I detonated the nuke and then restarted the mission and it gave me another nuke. And I even got a nuke ammo drop, which is beautiful. Um, because these enemies take quite a while to kill with your basic weapons on the ship. So destroying as many of them with a nuke as, as possible is very, very good. It's it's It just makes, it speeds this whole thing up immensely. So I was able to do that. That is another frame perfect trick. And now we have another racing section where I have to do all of these things without messing up a single one. Ooh, you know, it's spooky. Um, but yeah, so this is like basically the calm before the storm, if you can really even call it that. I mean, it's still kind of zany and wacky and silly and stupid. Um, but, you know, actually, why would I call it stupid? I love these games. They're so like... Like, even on PS3, where the movement is just the tiniest bit cringe, there's still 
such a wide level of difference between people who are really, really good at the PS3 movement and people who are really, really bad at the PS3 movement. And I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm not really good at, like, PS3 movement still feels very clunky to me. I'm not used to it. But once I get used to it, I'm really excited to see how far I can go in this category. Um, again, gamers, this is one of only three categories I've never gotten a world record in, in the entire Ratchet & Clank original trilogy. And this year, I'm aiming to change that. So, uh, on to Tadano. So, Tadano, there is a lot of crap to do here on Tadano. I'm going to try to go through all of it. I'm going to try to be a rap god as best I can, but uh, this is going to be a little much. So, I'm gonna, first, I'm going to uh, equip the bomb glove, and I'm going to go down here. I'm going to kill all these squirrels. So, I need to kill these squirrels to protect a bunch of tourists who are about to do a tour through this whole area. They, they want to see the rockets. Um, and no, not the Houston rockets. They're not even worth looking at these days. But these giant rockets that are just in the area, you know? Um, they're all over the place. And the squirrels will bite and kill these tourists. So I gotta be careful. Uh, and now I can go back over here. There's a couple hidden squirrels. They only pop out once there's, like, fleshy robot skin that pops by. See, like, that guy got a little hungry for robot flesh. Um, and we're gonna tackle two skill points at once. I'm going to blow up all of the rockets, and uh, I'm going to uh, attempt to keep the tourists safe. So I got to keep this guy a little safe. See another squirrel pops out in the distance. Whack him with the wrench. Throw a bomb down. All right, and now the tourists are completely safe. So I can go around just blowing up the rocket ships. And you should we should be getting back-to-back -back trophies here if I did everything correctly. So, at this point, let me see here, quick count. Five and five, that's all of them. Great, I'm going to wait for these guys to go by. I'm going to blow up this rocket now so it doesn't harm any of the other robots. And great, they all survived the tour. Isn't that amazing? All right, those two guys can live to tell the tale. But yeah, I, I always take out my anger on them after I get the skill point because at that point, the game can't do anything to me. Uh, so we get a trophy for that. You're my hero, even though I killed 80% of them. And now we can move on to the next portion of the run. Is this live or a rerun? Hello there, YTP Renewed. This is a live run that you're currently watching. Everybody say hi to YTP Renewed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Uh, anywho, sorry, I just like doing that thing where I like... Like, again, like I said, sometimes I like getting really parasocial. And so this, this is just an, another example of one of my sick pranks. Um, okay, so now we're going to sheep the squirrels that are obviously standing here. Guys, obviously there's a, a squirrel standing right here. We turn him to a sheep. Another one, another one, another one. So uh, we need to turn 14 squirrels into sheep to get a skill point. And what's interesting is that you can actually, on PlayStation 3 specifically... You can do it across two playthroughs. So I sheeped seven squirrels before, and I just sheeped another seven, meaning that uh, after all this is said and done, there's going to be two more squirrels I'm going to sheep and get the skill point. Can you please hold up a copy of today's newspaper? No, but I can put a shoe on my head, you know? I can do that much. Uh, the textures did not load, so I died. Tragic. He's That's, a psychic. It's basically the same thing, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Or it's uh, it's like um, like any 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 uh, any person who's ever ex experienced like the 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 male side of Tinder will know the uh, the the pains of having to ask, like the embarrassment of having to ask somebody to to say the word potato. It's just like that, you know. We we have to like do something about this AI invasion. All right, so now we're gonna cash in our armor magnetizer, uh, or cash in our trophy to that nerd that we bought like way, way, way long ago and get the armor magnetizer. And we're nearly done with everything on this planet. So now at this point, all I have to do is go up here, climb this rocket silo using first person wall climbing, go out of first person, charge down here, and then grab this nanotech that's right here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's intended, by the way. I, I think that's how the developers imagined we would get it all these years later, you know? Um. And okay, 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 okay. 
Don't want to die to that guy. By the way, uh, any enemy will kill me in one hit. Any single enemy. So we, we sheep two more dudes. I get the skill point. I'm going to get another trophy. Prepare your pog bones, everybody. It's pog bonesing time. How long do you think you can keep a shoe on your head while speedrunning? Well, I once kept a pair of pants on my head for an entire speedrun, so I'd like to imagine I would do a pretty good job at it. It just depends, right? Like, okay, hold on. I, I, I've got the perfect thing. I, I can rectify the situation. I've got a rock climbing shoe. I can keep this right on my head, okay, guys? Hold on. There we, see, there we go, perfect. All right, now you guys know it's a real run. Okay, so now we're on Bolden again. Um, let's see here. So we go up here. And I got to just make sure I'm clean with it right here. Because again, I die in one hit. I was not particularly clean with it that particular time. But particularly speaking, I think we're going to get it this particular time. Because I'm going to be much more particular. Okay, so go over there. And then we charge through here. Zem the Bolden Bolt. Already got it, Koshki. Thank you very much. But your uh, concerns are wasted. Okay, I'm going to be real with you guys. I really don't want this on my head. Not only is it like I really... Un yeah, like posture-wise, I'm not I'm not down with it. And also, like, like it's also a little stinky because I did go rock climbing yesterday. That's right. I, did you guys know I rock climb? It's funny. It's just like, it's like vegans and Finnish people. You never have to ask somebody if they're a rock climber. They will always tell you. So, sorry. But I'm also not sorry in a deeper, truer sense of the word. Okay. So uh, now we get to do all these little clank clips again. So if you enjoyed them the first time, they're going to be even more special to you the second time, right? So let's see here. Clipping through. Very nice. You can't tell what that, I, what that, I, that I'm a rock climber. I don't really have the physique yet. I'm realizing now that if I want to like really start improving my grade level, I have to actually become an athlete and like, you know, go outside more than a few times a year. <laughs> So, you know, I'm at that point now. Um, by the American system, I am a V4 climber. And by the European system, I am on like 5B, 5C, I think. Somewhere around there. So that's about where I am. Show your hands. No, they're, they're embarrassingly smooth right now. They're embarrassingly smooth. Because of this whole, like, moving to the Netherlands thing, I wasn't really able to um, focus on anything other than my move for about two and a half months. Like, it, it takes a lot of time and preparation to, to move across the world. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, <laughs> but my, my hands, like, got totally uncalloused from all the, the lack of climbing in my life. So just boulder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I always say rock climbing because most people don't know the difference. Um, I, I exclusively boulder. I, I don't actually do uh, outdoor rock climbing, at least not yet. That's a goal of mine for 2024. I want to start outdoor climbing. Um, but yeah, I've only done boulderings for now. And so the difference being bouldering is indoors only? Yes, bouldering is indoors, rock climbing is outdoors. Yeah, I had a feeling. Okay. Um... To modeling hands, yeah. It's 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 my one mark of shame, my smooth buttery hands. <laughs> um but yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna camera clip through this wall now. Gonna double jump up here. And we're nearly done with Aranos 2, which can be a bit of a problem for a lot of people. Um again, guys, I'm sorry that I'm not like super hyper like mega focusing on explaining every little last thing that's going on in the actual run itself. Again, if you guys have any questions, I'm totally down to answer anything. It's just that I feel like this game is is the kind of game that's just best experienced, almost like Subway Surfers, where it's like it's just so cool to just have conversations and just have like this on in the background. You know what I mean? It's just so so smooth and so fluid to watch that like I don't know, like it's just very visually aesthetic. So I I, I oftentimes don't think about what you guys don't know about the game. However, if you guys want to learn more, like, there are plenty of, like, oh, crap. Um, I can very easily explain more if you guys are, like, you know, if you raise your pitchforks and you're like, ah, I came here for, uh, you know, dry, concrete explanations of, of games that I played 20 years ago. You know, like, if, you, if, if that's what you need, I can do that a little bit more, you know? 
like chat like chat it, it, it's just like it's it's just so crazy chat like it's just so crazy like how how you can like do the things in this game you know what i mean so sorry uh just had to like verbally stim there a little bit okay so we're almost done with this uh right now but okay this is where the magic is actually going to begin so remember how i told you guys that i am basically going to do some stuff that looks like cheating so I need to get to a bolt count between 983,000 bolts and uh, 1.048 million bolts. I know those sound like made up numbers, but just go with me for a second, please. Just like, I swear there's a method to all this. I just want to double check my bolt count. I'm currently at 831,000. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to do this one. I should be at... What is it? Uh, 85,000, so uh, at roughly 920,000. So I should only have to do this three more times. Let me just double check. 913,000. So I'm going to do this three more times. Three more times. So there's one. There's two. And there's three. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save, also, trophy, pog. I'm going to save in this new slot. And I'm going to continue by doing this. Well, let me just make sure. Yes, perfect. I'm now going to do this two more times. I, I know this is weird. I know. Please just go with me. One. Two. And now I'm going to quit the game after I do the second one. I'm going to quit the game and the, and it's quitting the game that that messes everything up. So what I have done right now is essentially called pointer manipulation. I have used the in-game values such as planet ID, time playing the game, and bolt count to effectively rewrite the, the way that the game works um i've moved around all of the values within the actual game itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reload this file do mission two one more time um and then the magic happens so this is so weird like so weird uh so gorn mission two Now we are going to go to Tabora. And when I go to Tabora, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice something a little weird. Now, normally, bear in mind, there are normally a hundred crystals in this desert you have to collect. Um, uh, wait a minute. What's happening here? Why did it not... Oh, I underflowed. So there's a hundred crystals here. You guys might notice I'm currently at negative 14,000 crystals. That's not quite right. So I'm going to death abuse here. Um, and we're going to see if this actually works now. No. Okay, so what I need to do then, I need to go over here. I need to buy the rhino. And now I'm just you want to know you you want to know the actual reason why this is happening. I actually played the game too fast. Um, this only works properly if you play the game slowly enough that you don't need to do this. Um, because I burned through NG plus as fast as humanly possible. I actually have to just go around for a while collecting crystals and, and just like basically wasting time. Um, so once I do this, uh, it should be fine um, because, okay, to explain what's happening, when you activate quit exploit, your bolt count or your experience values are tied to your bolt count. And so I need an extremely high bolt count right now. Um, I might be able to do this if I just get one auto save off. It's hard to know for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to come over this way 
and actually start collecting uh, stuff over here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the decoy glove out. I'm going to proxy up this wall. And then I'm going to glide down over to here. And let me see here. Once I grab this, this might fix everything. Do we need to collect 14,000 crystals? No, but we do need to collect 100 of them. And now that I've auto-saved... Okay, the crystal value is fixing itself. Nature is healing. Uh, let me actually... Uh, no, I actually can't do anything over there. I don't have enough bolts. Um, interesting. Okay. I, I have yet to deal with this particular situation, but I know other people in the past have, so I'm not concerned about this. Um, I need ammo here. I need ammo here. I'm going to death abuse once again. I could have just filed for bankruptcy. That's true. I could have just done that. I really could have. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this is like, this is really, huh? Okay. I guess we're just going to go around a little bit more. We have to burn a little bit more time here, gamers. So what I'm going to do now is I need to collect all 100 crystals anyway. And it's not really like super important, like what order I do it in, like the, these things I have to do as long as I'm actually just doing them. So I have basically all 100 crystals on this desert memorized. They're, they're in the same position every time. And that's honestly like not even meant to be a flex. If anything, like, please make fun of me for taking the time to actually memorize where every single crystal in this desert is. Um, there's also a pretty decent chance I might miss one along the way because I, I just recently rerouted the entire map in my head. And so I'm still getting used to the new map and I kind of mess up uh, and get it crossed up with the old map from time to time. So uh, basically, I'm just a, a goofy little guy doing his best, okay? Um, haha, nerd. No, please, my feelings. Oh, I'm devastated right now. Please don't do this to me. Um, okay, so... Nerd, no, guys, I told you, my, my feelings are going to be hurt by this, please. Like, can't you tell? Can't you tell how sad I am right now? I'm, I'm just, ugh. It's so tragic. Okay, so now that I've... Uh, let's see, I think I've collected all the ones over there, yes. So now there's these three over here. Bald and nerd. Okay, can I clear something up with you all, Twitch chat? Can I just do this really quickly? I'm not bald. There's nothing wrong with being bald, but I'm just not bald, okay? Can, can can you guys please, like, use your eyes for the first time maybe ever and just understand that I have a full head of hair on my head? Like, I'm not asking you to be insensitive towards bald people. I'm just asking you to, to, to live in reality. Okay, this is good. The fact that the negative timer is ticking down on the screen now means that I'm actually in a good spot. So I can death abuse whenever I want now. Triggered. <laughs> oh my god, dude. It's funny, my, my, stream, my stream loves to tell me like, they know I, I, like, they've told me in the past, Zem, it's not that you have hair, it's that you exude bald energy. And I still don't really understand what that means. But at this point, I, I have I, I have no choice but to go with it. I, I don't know, man. All right, so now look at this. So now we can cash in all these crystals for 40 million bolts. You guys ever seen anybody have 40 million bolts in this game? Um... So now I can actually afford to buy all the things I was looking to buy. Um, we basically just scammed the hell out of that guy. Like, we we took him for a ride financially. So he has nothing now, and now we can use our oodles and oodles of cash to uh, basically just get whatever we want. Uh, but I have to leave here for just a second to buy the Carbonox armor. Um, what's funny, though, is I'm going to buy the Carbonox armor, but it's not going to show that I have the Carbonox armor. Because the way that Quit Exploit works is that the timer is tied into what armor Ratchet is wearing. So right now, as you can see, I had the blue armor before, and now I have the orange armor. I'm going to be buying the Carbonox armor here, and I'm going to have it for this planet. But when I go back to Tabora, I'm going to be back in the orange armor. So the order is blue armor, orange armor. I think there's a... Is there a green armor? Then it's Carbonox armor. Then it goes across the skins. So first, I believe it's the agent skin. Then the clown skin. Then uh, there's just a bunch of other skins. It's it's really weird. So there's my uh, my bolt count is currently at a hundred million. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough bolts. Like uh, like 
that sounds so stupid, right? But I actually don't know if that's enough bolts. Um, because, again, the XP values of the weapons that I use are tied into my bolt count. So check this out. If this is actually working properly, this is what I mean. So this is a yellow weapon. If, if you guys remember, to get the blue weapons, it took forever, right? To go from yellow to blue. Watch this. I got it in one enemy. And that is the power of Quit Exploit. That is the, the power and the madness of Quit Exploit. Is that I can literally level every single weapon I have in one hit. Or with one enemy, rather. Not with one hit, obviously. Um, also, my nanotech is now maxed out. And so we're just going to be spending the next few minutes over in this area. Uh, just upgrading all of my weapons. Uh, I need enemies to show up somewhere. So let me do this. Okay. Yeah, this is this is basically the uh, the the big to do here on this planet is just level up every single weapon that I have. And there is a methodology to this. Like you can actually do it faster if you do it certain ways. Um, I'm not super familiar with all of the ancient texts just yet. You know, I'm still like deciphering the glyphs. Um, so I, I'm a little suboptimal with this, but I'm learning. So here's a little thing. I, I like to do this a lot. Ones in chat, if you played this game growing up and you absolutely wish that you that this is something that you could have done when you were leveling up your own weapons on your own 100% file, I got to know. Because this is truly some insane stuff. Uh, I need the rocket tube here. That should upgrade it, maybe. Did that guy actually die? I don't actually know. Okay. Like, think about how many hours this could have saved all of you. Like, it, it, it's it's just completely insane. And I want you guys to know that if you want to understand how to do this glitch, I will be making a like multiple videos on this category. No, please. Oh, I need to hit an autosave spot. I need to hit it really badly. Uh, actually, is this that bad? I don't know if it is just yet. Give me one second to figure all this out. Uh, that should work. I got to upgrade all these. Um, but yeah, guys, I will be making a full in-depth tutorial on how to do all this. Uh, I'm releasing... I, I'm, I'm going to be making two different YouTube videos on this whole process, like my, my journey with this category. One of them will be exclusively for the Platinum Trophy speedrun, and then one of them will be uh, for, like, my world record journey in this category. And the world record journey one is going to have full in-depth tutorials on all the stuff that, like, maybe you're questioning how to do yourself. Oh, yeah, the Clank Zapper, by the way. This also upgrades in one, en uh, one enemy. Zap, please. Don't zap that guy. Zap one of these bugs. Thank you. Um, I should be getting a skill point now, I think, for upgrading all weapons, maybe. Uh, no, I still have a few to go. So let me do this first. Uh, I need the Clank Zapper to not own me here. Okay. I need the Clank Zapper to stop firing. And this is what I mean by saying I'm a little suboptimal with this. I shouldn't have equipped the Clank Zapper like that. I should have waited a little bit. It would have been better for me if I had done that. Um, let me throw some turrets down. I've recently found... Okay, can I talk to you guys about something a little weird? There's a bunch of people that pronounce turrets as turrents, like with an N. That really weirds me out. There's no N in the word turrets. I don't know how many of you guys know that or not. But like, there's no there's no N in that word. So I, I, I don't know. It's just like a personal pet peeve of mine. I just wanted to make that very clear. Uh, Please shield. Yes, there we go. Good. And I don't really know why people do it either. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, if I'm going to be completely honest. It's very strange to me that people pronounce it that way. Is it like a regional thing? That's the correct way? It just isn't, though. Like, <laughs> how can you even say that? All right, I need the synthenoids to kill this guy. Uh, Please and thank you. It takes them a little bit. It's like a Clydesdale. It won't be pretty, but they'll get there. You know, they'll, they'll get there. Please? Please? I'm begging you nicely to kill this guy. There we- The Clank Zapper stole the XP! Oh my god, I'm gonna scream. 
I hate when this happens, dude. I blunder one time. I throw the, the freaking Clang Zapper on the one time I don't mean to. And this is what happens. Okay, whatever. Whatever. I gotta move away from this guy so the Synthenoids will kill him and the, and the Clang Zapper won't. Please, just do the job. Just do the job. Just finish him off. Thank you for, for the love of God and all that is holy. Okay, now we got the skill point for maxing out all weapons. However, I am about to now go over here and uh, I'm gonna death abuse actually. Um, just because I want... Oh no, I need to hit a, uh, an auto save point. Sorry, I'm still, like I said, I'm still learning all the ins and outs of this category. I need to hit an auto save spot if I want to fix my uh, my bolts. Okay. So we do this, we do this, we do this. All right, and now, same thing as before, we're just going to upgrade every single weapon in the game to blue. The blue, re blue regard Q kazoo, if that reference lands for anybody. Lands for me, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what a good show. Yeah, it was an amazing show. It really was. Um, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, for those of you keeping track at home. Uh, yeah, so this is the detriment of not having a high bolt count. So I'm going to need to go... Uh, okay, I got all 12 over here, I believe. And I cashed in a bunch of them. Yeah, I, I think I got all 12. Um, and now I'm going to autosave by grabbing another bolt off in the darkness. So check this out. This is a weird way of grabbing this bolt. Yeah, like I said, guys, walls, suggestions. Yeah, they don't really, they're, they're not real. They're not, they're not real like, like, they're just like birds, you know? So, okay, now that I've done this, I can go over here. I'm going to death abuse once more. As you can see, my, my crystal count is actually ticking upwards now. But if I die here... Now I have 32,000 crystals. So now that guy is mega broke. I mean, like, I just, I took him for a ride for the tune of 420 million bolts. All right. Will you upload a tutorial for quit exploit? Yes, I will. That will be a part of my video. So uh, now at this point, I can collect the rest of the crystals, but I'm also going to upgrade all my weapons as I do that. Um, this routing was probably not optimal. But again, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll review the VODs later. So now, as you can see, everything gets uploaded in just like in literally just one enemy. Like it's even at yellow, it's it's just like insane how quickly this goes. Um, Ultra Vaporizer. I need this to take out that guy while this takes out this guy. There we go. Uh, I need to upgrade the Bouncer, the people's favorite weapon, even though I, I actually kind of despise this weapon a little bit. Actually, who am I kidding? The bouncer's not that bad. It's pretty fun. It's fun to watch things just blow up. You know what I mean? Uh, I admit it. I'm not a bouncer Benjamin like some people, but like, you know, I got some love for the bouncer. Zem, what's your favorite category in this franchise? Uh, the one that I have the most history with is Up Your Arsenal New Game Plus Quit Exploit. Uh, it's the one that I've had world record in more than anybody else. Uh, like, m Basically, my stream career is is like can you can trace a line based on on like what i was doing with that category and when you know what i mean um and so i love that category to death and back however it's one of those categories that i'm not going to be running for the foreseeable future because i want to focus on uh categories that are good for youtube content like i said i'm a youtube andy now um and so it's not just enough for me to do a category because I love it. I also want to be able to craft an amazing story with it. So the story is not there yet for uh, Uya Enchi Plus, no QE. But uh, yeah, 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 guys, I, you, you, like the real ones, you guys, the ones who watch me all the time, know I'm talking about no QE. But people who don't know a whole lot about these games are going to hear me say no quit exploit. Oh, wait a minute. You guys do know what, what, what quit exploit is. Oh, never mind. Okay, there's a ratchet category called New Game Plus No Quit Exploit where we don't do this like crazy crap that you're watching me do here. Um, it if you do quit exploit in Ratchet Three, it skips two thirds of the game. Um, and so there's a category where we don't allow that, and that's the category that I love to death. But yeah, like there is a story to be told in that category. But um, listen, guys, I'm trying to go for ones that are more 
what we would call slam dunks, you know? Like, it's cool to watch a YouTube video essay about a guy who spent way too much time running one category in a speedrun, but it's a lot, in some ways, a lot more easily accessible to make a video about a guy who collected all of the things faster than anyone in the world, you know? That's a very easy thing for even, like, casual gamers to follow. So we're trying to stick away, like stray away from more hardcore stuff right now, but we will be introducing hardcore content back into the YouTube channel when we feel it's appropriate. We're not, we're not scared of doing that kind of stuff. It's just like the timing has to be right, you know. Um. So yeah, that's my favorite category to answer the question. Um, a very thorough way of answering that question, but like I said, I'm an ADHD nutcase, and when I get very excited like I am right now, I don't know, is, is, it, is it clear that I'm just very excited to share, like, this amazing category of a series that I love to death with you guys? I hope that's at least clear, you know? Like, whether you like me or you feel like you've, I'm, like, rambling on way too much about stupid crap you do not care about, I hope it's very clear that I have nothing but love for these games and, and for what I do. I'm, I'm very... Uh, I'm very privileged to be able to do this for a living, and uh, I do my best to make sure that I, I take time to appreciate it every single day. If you have you guys ever seen the movie Up, or not Up? I'm sorry, Soul. Um, Soul is my absolute favorite Disney movie. I, mean, I know it's Disney Pixar. People say there's a difference, but like, it's my absolute favorite Disney movie. Um, and. Uh, Basically, like, I'm not going to spoil it in case you haven't seen it. It's it's an incredible movie, but it's all about, like, the, the whole moral is that, like, life is so much more than just, like, doing things because we feel like we have to, you know? It's a beautiful movie. I really, really highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. So it, it's that's, like, the way that I try to live my life these days as a content creator is, like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna like what I'm aiming for anymore, but I'm gonna enjoy every single minute of doing it. That's that's my goal. Which honestly, can I keep it a buck fifty with you guys? I feel like there's a lot of speedrunners who have a really hard time doing that. I, I feel like like I, I I'm obviously like I'm not ragging on speedrunners at all. I love speedrunners. I think they're they're some of the most passionate people on the planet. But I do notice that sometimes speedrunners have this like really incredible way of of like doing something to like seeking so much like unnecessary perfection. And maybe not unnecessary, maybe it's not unnecessary to them, right? But like they seek perfection to such an insane degree that they kind of lose the forest and the trees. And like a lot of speedrunners just forget that like the act of speedrunning is supposed to be fun. You know, and I, I forgot about that for a really, really long time, which is why I feel comfortable talking about it. I feel like it'd be really judgmental of me to say this otherwise. But like, I don't know. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if you're a speedrunner watching this or like just somebody in general who's burnt out on your passions, like you got to rediscover why you did them in the first place. You know, you, you have to just remember that like our goals and our like metrics at the end of the day are extremely arbitrary. And they can and should change all the time. Like, that's just who we are as people. We're, we're just people who grow and people who learn. And, like, like, I can honestly say I'm a completely different person than I was even just a few years ago. You know? So, I don't know. And, and to top it all off, I missed a crystal somewhere. And I'm gonna... Uh, have to stymie my impending aneurysm while I try to find this uh, final crystal. Oh, it's, it's maybe these two over here. Uh, that would be really nice if it's just these two. Please be the last two. Please. Please. Skill point. <laughs> oh, lost in the heart of the sea. All right, here comes the painful part. We're not leaving until I find the crystal chat. All right, so you better hope that I, I find this thing sooner rather than later. You better hope so. Because if not, we're going to be here for a while. Like I said, I'm still getting used to the new route. Um... Like, this is a much different route than I'm used to doing. I had the old route down pat, but this particular route, I'm still ironing out the uh, the little kinks, you know? Yeah, get a little cozy, Chad. This could take us a minute. 
So I've found in my time of doing this, there's a few key spots that I tend to miss whenever I do mess up crystals. Oftentimes, uh, it's around the perimeter. Um, so I'm going to check the perimeter first. Zem the crystal. Oh, oh god, here it comes. Here comes the impending Zem the crystal uh, nuisances in my chat. You guys love to do this every single run, don't you? <laughs> every run until I have this down cold. Um, no, but in a way, I actually love it. I know it's it's all jokes, you know? Like, my, my, stream, my stream community rags on me all the time. Um, but I gotta just say, shoutouts to my stream community, for those of you guys who are here right now, and even people who aren't an active part of my community, but still just, like, people that I know from the speedrunning world. Like, I gotta just say thank you all for being my harshest critics. You know, like, I'm, I'm very thankful that, uh, you know, there's always gonna be people in this world who, uh, love us or hate us blindly, right? But you should always seek to surround yourself with the people who will, like, who fluctuate between both when necessary. Because they're just, like, I don't know, how many how many people do you see, especially on social media? I mean, we see this crap all the time with content creators. How many content creators do you know are just surrounded by yes men who just tell them all the time, like, oh, no, 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 no this is a great idea. Like, you're so smart. And, like, like, you've never had a bad idea or a bad take once in your life. You know, like the little bootlickers. I'm very happy that my stream isn't a bunch of bootlickers. You guys give me so much hate. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I'm very thankful for it. Um, Yo, shoutouts to Shasta. Nothing but love for you, man. Hope you're doing well. Um, So at this point, it probably makes the most sense... The Zemi Poopers. Okay, I, I think that's a little, like, that might not... I, I like the, the idea... I'm sorry, let me take a step back and include the rest of the people in this conversation. I'm trying to come up with a community name. For a long time, the people who watched my stream, we were the Rack Pack. You know, it's fu it's a funny little play on words, right? We're not the Rat Pack. We're Rack, like Ratchet and Clank shortened. We're the Rack Pack. But as of late, I've been doing a lot of non-Ratchet content, so the Rack Pack isn't always super applicable. So I'm trying to come up with, like, a bunch of names that can describe this community that can fluctuate between, you know? So right now, I'm field testing the Zem Boys. You know, like, we we, we, we wear skirts and we and we go out on the town in our, in our, in our you know, like we're the Zem Boys. But, you know, I, some people identify with that, some people don't. And so I'm trying to find one that, like, really unites the chat. You know what I mean? Like, just really is, like, a cohesive gel. So if you have any suggestions, uh, you know, my DMs are open. Um, it makes it sound like you're talking about racks, but it's an inside joke, you know? The Zemmers, I, you know, the Zemmers isn't bad. It's, it's short, sweet, it's to the point. It's not bad, but I need something that, like, the pack's a punch. Is that Zem Boys with a Y or Zem Boys with an S? Whichever, you, or Zem Boys with an I? Whichever one you want, that's what it has. There's still a nest in the inner part across the gap. Are you serious? Did I really miss them across the gap over here? I cannot believe I did that. I'm actually, I'm actually so cringe. This is what I missed the whole time. This is the one. Kill point, oh, please and no. thank you. Yeah, of course. It's always, you know what? At the very least, that's that's a new way for me to mess that up. So we always value those. Those are new experiences. That's valid. And, and frankly, I kind of want. Uh, oh, I thought I was gonna get like 800 million bullets, but there we go. We get the trophy. We get the trophy. Uh, and now that we're done with this, I believe I can go to Uzla, and we can continue this run. Uh, by the way, I just. Take yes, this would be the perfect time to do the break. Uh, if that's what you were about to say. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, do you want to say your thing so you don't forget it? Nope. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. During these longer runs, we like to take breaks every hour or so, so everybody can get up, stretch, get some water, make sure they're taking care of themselves. Just a quick reminder before we go to the break: if you missed out on any of our other Hoffic shows or our past events like Flame Fatales, you can go check out the vods over at YouTube.com/slash Games Done Quick. Uh, we'll see you in just a few minutes for more of the run. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. Today, we are having a Ratchet and Clank Going Commando Showcase. 
We're in the middle of a run. I'll hand it right back over uh, whenever you're ready. Oh, it's going to be back. All right, let's do this. All right, so welcome back, everybody. If you uh, are just joining us, um, my name is Zem, and uh, I like the party. So uh, we're going to start. So, okay, here's something to kind of point out. So if you guys notice, I came over here, and now I only have three nanotech rings. If I fire this plasma storm and kill an enemy with it, now I have full nanotech again. And this is going to be a common thing that you're going to notice um, is that every like planet or death, this particular interaction is going to happen. Um, oh yeah, by the way, you can just click this wall and now we, we're at the secret boss fight. So I uh, hope you guys like secret boss fights because we got one right here. And the benefit of doing this secret boss fight is that uh, we get the box breaker for it. Uh, that's how we... For some reason, okay, so I gotta explain this. So we have a Polish member of the community and we just love the way that she says box breaker. And so uh, she's totally cool with it. We ask her to do it all the time. <laughs> so that's it's a, a little community inside joke for you. I try to do my best these days to explain those little community inside jokes because I know that people get kind of annoyed when there's jokes happening around them that they don't get. Um, so now I got now I got the box breaker, and now we're gonna just be uh, zooming through this next part. Oh wait a minute, I was supposed to do a piece of movement tech here. Hold on, I got a mulligan. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Huh. Okay. And uh, we get a skill point here for breaking all of the breakables in this room. And because now we have the box breaker, we can just do it like this. Like we can just. Hyper strike a few times, and uh, this next hyper strike should do it. Bang! Skill point trophy to go with it coming up soon. And now we go to Barlow. Um, and we needed to go to Barlow because we, if 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 you guys don't know, trophy pog bones in chat. Uh, if you guys don't know, we did actually miss a bolt on Barlow. It wasn't just the race bolt. There was another one. I don't know if you guys noticed. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Gonna go over here. Gonna do this. Wrench swing over. Long jump twice. I practiced this movement a lot today, so I'm very proud of how good I look doing it right now. And we are in there. Oof, I love that movement. It's so cool looking, and it feels so good to hit. So, chat, that one's for you because the 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 people in my chat have been watching me play this category. They'll be able to tell you that even yesterday when I was doing, or no, even two days ago, the last time I did a run, I, I, I wasn't able to do that that smoothly. So, um, yeah, that, one, that one's for my own chat. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Now that we're done with Barlow, we go to Indaco. And Indaco is a weird planet because we, we will not have Clank again. Um, we've had Clank this entire time. Well, sort of. Ever since Eranos 2, we've had Clank. Um, but for whatever reason, on Indaco, the game uh, loads you in with the idea that you do not have Clank. Uh, so we have to go rescue him again. But I don't know. It is just weird. Oh, this is the right time to turn on big head mode. So every run I turn on big head mode at least once. It's not optimal at all. It actually loses time, but uh, it's funny. So I do it. Oh, I died. That's even funnier in a way. So yeah. Ratchet finally went to college. Um, how was your uh, how was your all's last five minutes? <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, I'm telling you, you know what it was? It was what we were talking about earlier. It was definitely education connection. That, that's that's how Ratchet got his head so big. You know, he had too big for he got dang speed run. Um, all right. So now we're going to stay in first person. These are more techniques I literally just learned today. I learned you can just do this. Just walk through that door. If you like position Ratchet so that he's perpendicular to the door, throw a turret down and hold L1. You just pop through the door like that. Uh, and here I'm gonna get exit first person. And I'm gonna drop a decoy down right here. Uh, okay, that's not exactly what I intended to happen, but that's fine. And let me see here. I'm going to be a little cautious. Actually, no. 
I'm gonna throw caution to the wind here for a second. If I die, I die. I lose like a minute and a half if I die here. But that's okay. There we go. Alright. The reason why I said that I was throwing caution to the wind there is, is because it's very easy to die on that clip. So, you know. Eh, it's just the way it be. Uh, I think this should work. Yes. Perfect. So, uh, the skill point that we have to get, the big one that we have to get here on Indaco, is for breaking all breakables. And that's why we had to do this after we got the box breaker, because now I can just go around hyper striking everywhere and look at all these lamps. All these beautiful lamps get blown up in an instant. Imagine the property damage. <laughs> just, just, just think about it for a second, you know? Think about how pissed someone would be. Like, wouldn't you be just like enraged if you spent all that time and money making that thing and then all of a sudden one smack of a wrench? A wrench! It's not even like a big thing. It's just a wrench. Uh-oh. Why are you death abusing so often in this run? Uh, because it's usually optimal. I mean, sometimes I just mess up, but like, usually if I'm dying, it's because it's actually optimal to do so at that point. Um, it's just a matter of where you are, and like, the checkpoint system in this game is a little weird. So, you know. Oh yeah, that's right, I didn't even think about it. Like, the, all this property damage, it literally doesn't even matter. Just like, put it on my tab, you know? What's, what's like, what's a few hundred thousand bolts to, like, literal King Midas levels of wealth here? Uh, oh yeah, this is a new technique that I learned today, too. You can just do this, and clip through that. It's beautiful. Uh, then you do this. So I'm like, I'm very excited because I, I learned so much of this today. Just specifically for this run. I wanted to, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Um, okay, this should still work. No, this isn't going to work at all. All right, I wasn't supposed to break that uh, that canister. And now all these little guys spawn. Okay. And now I should be getting the skill point here real quick like. Bang. Uh, that won't do it. However, when I go into this room. Bang. Wait, I still didn't get the skill point. Whoa. Hmm. Um, okay. Okay, we're gonna have to be... Uh, huh. Okay. Give me a second here, Twitch chat, okay? Chat, I mean, like, this is just so crazy, you know? Bang. Still no skill point? What about this? Please? And maybe this? Do those even count? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. I, um... Skill issue. You missed two lanterns? Yeah. I did, didn't I? Did a pizza just fl Yo, you found pizza car! Congratulations, Zerna, uh, Zeno. You're... For, for recognizing the existence of pizza car, you've become honorary town rookie of the day. Oh, there a jolly good rookie. Oh, there a jolly good rookie. Are they a jolly good rookie? You know, maybe I should probably do a better job of explaining what's actually happening in this game. E oh. no. Okay, anyway, we're going to continue this. Um, I'm going to do this really quickly. Let's get those last little lamps that I missed. Um, where could those have been? Is it these? This would be really convenient. Beautiful. Okay. Now we're done with Indaco. So now that we're done with Indaco, I believe we go to Snivelac. Because it's... Yes, it's definitely Snivelac. Oh yeah, did you guys see Jack and Daxter over there? That was kind of weird, right? What are those guys doing in this game? Pizza shit, my beloved. <laughs> There's something about the my beloved meme that I just really enjoy. Um, okay, so now we're going to be on Sniv here again. And this is kind of an interesting one. So... This is one of the weirder swing shot proxies. Take a look at this, gamers. Uh, don't... Okay, no, no, no. Uh, don't look at that one. That was... I was joking. It was a joke. Okay? Uh, and hopefully those boxes... Mm, this might be a problem. Okay, let's just continue on. Okay, no, no. It, see, it's not a problem at all. It's not even remotely a problem. Okay, it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. Um, I can fix this. I can fix this. I can fix this. Wait a minute, I don't have to do this. I can just do this. Wait. 
Um, death abuse? I will do no such thing. Me death abusing? No way. Uh, I mean, uh, of course I'll death abuse. That's obviously what I intended to do. Uh, okay. I hope you all were not taking notes on that, but definitely take notes on this. Okay, definitely take notes on this. You guys, you all ready for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take notes on that one and not the other ones. Just ignore the other ones that happened. All right, this is the good one. This is the good one. Future world record holder, by the way. <laughs> uh, okay, so now that we're done with that, we get to just fight the boss here. And now... I'm going to do some movement to get over Thar. Oh, come on. I did all the flips and then I messed up the one easy part. Okay, so now we can just go around here. Go into the cutscene. And yeah, none of this is intended, in, in case that's not obvious. Um, none of this is really like what you're supposed to be doing. But like, come on. When is, that, when is a speedrun ever done what they're supposed to be doing? Uh, let's see here. So, I want you to do that. Nope, don't do that. That breaks the bridge. I don't know how to manipulate this guy. And frankly, if anybody actually understands how to manipulate this guy, can you please, like, slide into my DMs and inform me why he always breaks that bridge and what I'm doing wrong? Because I genuinely have no clue. I never have in all the time I've ever run this game. And I, I, I need to be educated, connected for free with connect, uh, education connection. All right. Whoa, forced to... Oh, wait, hold on. All right, we have a more powerful poking weapon now. I forgot about this. So for whatever reason, the Tetra Bomb gun is just amazing at poking, and it and it just shreds. It absolutely shreds this dude's health bar. Like, look how good that is at just shredding that dude's health bar. Okay. Um. He doesn't know. It's true. I don't know. Please, please, Mantodia. Save me. Save me from this prison. Is this the game where the villain claims to wish to bring peace with an iron fist? Probably. Hey, Zem, tell us a story. Uh, What kind of story do you want to hear right now? Hmm? I got stories on stories. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, I can replace you with this. Okay. Did you forget to take your meds again? Of course I forgot to take my meds again. Like, wh what, do you think- Do you think I have something other than ADHD? Where, like, my brain is just, like, a constant, like, like... You, you think my brain isn't made of goop? Like, you think I remember to do things like a normal person would? No! I forget and- and just, like, I, I fly by the seat of my pants in every aspect of my entire life. <laughs> I moved to freaking- the, I moved to Rotterdam from America, all right? Like, what kind of person do you think I am? A, a sane, stable person who remembers to take his meds? <laughs> listen, listen, all right? Just- just remind me at the end of the run, okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, just remind me at the end of the run. I got, I got more important things to do right now, okay? I gotta- I gotta blow up these balls. No singing story? Self-duet? No. I will not do a self-duet. However, I will tell you the story of one time when I was in an all-male a cappella group back in college when somebody actually auditioned for our group uh, by singing a Disney duet by himself. It was nothing short of alarming. Um, he also came in... He, he, like, put the pedal to the metal from the very beginning. He came in, and we always ask all the auditionees, like... Do you prefer cake or do you prefer pie? Right? An age-old question. His response was not just that he loves cake. He said his favorite cake was La Bête Noire, the Black Beast. I have never heard of such a cake in my entire life. So if any of you have ever had La Bête Noire, you can rest easy knowing that this one dude I met 10 years ago empathizes with your struggle. Um... When did you get your first paper straw, and what is your opinion of it? I hate paper straws. I mean, I understand the point of why they exist, and I I, I try my best to be eco-friendly. But I just don't, like, just don't give me a straw. Like, just make me drink from the cup. Like, I don't care. Like, you know, just, just like, I'll drink from the cup. I don't need a straw. I, like, I, I have motor skills. I can do things. Um... 
but yeah, so what was I saying? I don't know, something stupid probably. Um, ones in chat, if you enjoy this run a lot, like you're really, really enjoying it, and also I'm not bald. All right, just type one if you're enjoying it, and that's it, aside from like maybe also you think I'm not bald. So, yeah. Just like, I just want to see, you know? Just want to see where we're standing here exactly. One, okay, good. Yes, fantastic. Glad to hear it. Yes, of course. Of course you're all typing one right now. Ugh, amazing. Wait, what do you mean two? What do you mean two? <laughs> Why are you typing two? What? What, are you trying to say that you, that you don't enjoy my speed run? That's, that's all you could be saying, right? Because it's definitely not the other thing that I said. One except bald. Okay, relax. You guys, all right, you guys got to calm down, all right? You can make fun of me for a lot of things, okay? You can make fun of me because I'm a speedrunner. You can make fun of me because women my age don't respect people who do YouTube full-time. <laughs> you, you, can, you can make fun of me because I play League of Legends, okay? But you cannot make fun of me for being bald. I am not. <laughs> I am not bald, and I am certainly not bulge. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's continue on. <laughs> Green screen hair technology. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's the same stuff we landed on Mars with, you know? Okay, uh, let's see here. Oh, yikes, you play League? Yeah, I'm a dirty League player. But I promise I'm at least good at the game. Just own it. That's <laughs> what every League player says. What? That I'm good at the game? That's what every League player says. No, no, no. I'm good and I'm a good person. Can't you tell? Can't you tell that I'm a really good person? <laughs> Whew, uh, really weird that you guys are accusing me of stuff right now. All right, so we're on a double orbit. Uh, we have to do All this right. fight again. It would be worse if you were a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Okay, that's 100% true. At least I have some integrity, okay? Yu-Gi-Oh players, I don't even know where they stand these days, you know? Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh used to be so good 10 years ago. Uh, oh. Okay, you'd be... Well, okay, are you an avid Yu-Gi-Oh player, Church? Is that is that why you say this? Or, like, when no, was the last I time you played Yu-Gi-Oh? No, I playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu -Oh. you, 10 years ago. You, I you, you ex go Oh, ahead. sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I want you to finish. I, I don't, I'm sorry for interrupting. I can tell you, like, exactly. It was like, it, I, it might legitimately be 10 years ago, uh, last month. Uh, it was, uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, 10 years ago, a few months ago, because it was, I went to a, a locals before going to SGDQ 2014. That was the last time I ever played Yu Gi Oh! Okay. And how did it go? <laughs> uh, it was fine because Yu Gi Oh! wasn't a degenerate game back then. <laughs> Okay, that's true. It, it, I feel like, I feel like, like there's there's like perceptions of degeneracy, right? Because for me, anything beyond, like, like anything, uh, pendulum summoning and beyond, I just think is is like complete, like like horse crap. Correct. You know what I mean? Like any that's of that crap, like X Y Z summoning, like what the hell? You know, like synchro summoning, like just get over it. You know, <laughs> get over it. Uh uh, so I, I know people don't like XZs and uh, Synchros, and I'm okay with that. So I was playing around that time. Um, mm. Pendulums, Pendulums came out like right after SGDQ 2014, and that's why I say it, it went to hell after that. Because uh, Pendulums are bad. XZs and Synchros in comparison to Pendulums are not that bad. When you release a card type that is so broken, you have to change how your game works in order to make that card type playable, you screwed up. <laughs> Fair and based. Not Xyz is based. You know, I guess I, I shouldn't be surprised that of all the people in the Ratchet community who would play Yu-Gi-Oh, it would be the person whose name is 24-7 Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be all that surprised. <laughs> yeah, might, that might have been a somewhere yeah, in there. I, I gotta be honest, I'm right there with you, Sajbean. This is also the first time I've ever seen Yugi talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's, like, really jarring for me. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot the birds. Okay, hold on. Uh, you gotta, you gotta, uh, 
blow up 14 birds, I believe. Wait, I thought that uh, was real. Well, that's why you have to blow them up. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Because we don't like liars, okay? So, before... Um, before sorry, you go. No, 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 I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, before we get too far from this, somebody, uh, right after your uh, cake story, uh -huh. asked, wasn't he saying Forêt Noir, which is a chocolate cake? I, I, listen, I, I remember, this has been burned into my brain. I don't know <laughs> what cake you're talking about. I will literally never forget La Bête Noir. And then he explains okay. even further, the Black Beast. I, the, it's just the way that he said it and the, and like, the stance that he had, the pride that he took in it, it all just threw me for a loop. I will never forget La Bête Noire. Also, trophy! Isn't that Pog, chat? Isn't that just like... Like, doesn't that just Pog you all the way down to your bones? Okay, so now we're actually going to enter the part of the game that I feel like most people either love the most or dread the most. It's the arena. Love watching your YouTube is happy to catch a stream. These are my childhood games, so loving the new speedruns. Thank you for the content and for being you. Gobo plays games. I will do nothing if not be myself as loudly and as obnoxiously as humanly possible. I just, I, you guys have to understand that, like, once you reach a certain point in your life, you just don't care anymore. Like, you really just don't care. There's going to be people who like you, and there's going to be people who hate you, and you have almost no control over why anybody hates you. So you might as well just embrace the chaos and just be the best version of yourself and, and be yourself as unapologetically as humanly possible. It's like, I don't know. It, it doesn't make any sense to me, but then again, people don't really make a whole lot of sense to me. So as bald as he is. <laughs> oh my God. Um, what was I saying? Something about being bald. I mean, not being bald. Um, <laughs> whew, that was scary. I almost, almost took the lid off the kettle for that one. <laughs> Don't really know where that one came from. It's past one a.m. and I'm still sitting here. They're following your channel on your own channel as well. You are very entertaining. Thank you, Pepper. I appreciate that. That means a lot. You know, we have nothing but time here, so I might as well just chit chat with you all. Um, what do you guys want to talk about? What what's what's been on your minds, like? It could be anything, just anything at all. Let's just have a conversation. Let's open up the floor to the people. Well, Zem got well, people get, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Church. I was just reading well, a stupid chat message. While well, well, people are uh, getting their questions, and I do want to say uh, the the one a.m. Uh, comment made me remember it's pretty late for you, and I really appreciate you being here. I yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, I fully expected you to say no. Nah, that's too late. Give me a different date. But <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Um, I, I have gone past the Sigma male grind set. I am now on my true mushroom male grind. I'm on my Shrigma grind set, okay? So I don't I don't say no to things right now. I don't. I'm more than happy to do any amount of, G, of, of stupid runs at stupid hours. Yeah, as a reminder to you all, even though I look and sound and taste American, uh, I do live in the Netherlands. Uh, I just moved here this last month. And I love it. I absolutely love it. It's amazing here. Um, so very different than my time in America. And uh, I'm learning to not only experience and appreciate more about the world at large, but also appreciate things about my own home country that I that I took for granted. You know, just crazy how that works sometimes. You no, know? it's just so crazy. I mean, I mean, chat. It's just like it's just so crazy. You know, like. <laughs> Sorry, I do my. I do my horrible XQC impression nonstop these days. Um, I promise I'll be better than this. I, I apologize. I'm going to beat the allegations of being a streamer with a zero creativity. Um, okay, so now it's the wrench only section. Are you sure you're a speedrunner? Listen, man, I've been doing this for too long. There's nothing else I possibly could be. Nothing else I possibly could be. Um... Aside from, you know, a genius. Can't forget that one. That's one of the most important ones. Uh, I feel like I'm doing this on the wrong side of the arena, and it's, like, really hurting my brain. Uh, no, actually, I am doing this on the, on, the, on the side I normally do it on. It just doesn't feel that way, you know? Sometimes you just get, like, a spooky feeling. 
Really like your vibe. Keep being you. Thank you. And you should be keeping... You keep being you as well, Tatiana. Alright? You keep being you. And be the best goddamn you you can possibly be. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess... I, like, I don't I don't, I want to, like, blather on and on about my own crap here, right? Now. Oh, no, I said I would open up the floor. I want to hear what you all have to say. Um, chat, they're taking my gold chat. chat. <laughs> I mean, it's not, like I, it's not like I need it, chat. Like, it's not like I need it. Sorry, I, I get, like, so down the, like, the meat canyon rabbit hole. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, I, I was honestly pretty down in the dumps on my own life. Like, I'm not going to get too in the weeds with it, but I didn't really like my life for a very long time. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why I didn't like my life. But um, I've come to appreciate the times in life where uh, you really are just not happy in your own skin. Because those, like, sadness and anger are the two things that teach you the most about yourself. And so I'm not saying, like, seek out, like, miserable experiences, but I am saying that if you're caught in a bad time in your life, understand from the perspective of, like, there will be a day when you will look back on the ways that your bad times changed you and you will appreciate them. So that's how I kind of felt coming out of the pandemic. I, I was... If you guys don't know, maybe, maybe this is, like, a, a key factor of why I went in completely insane, but I was alone for three years, comp like, alone. Like, no friends in the area, nobody visiting me, no family, nobody. I was on my own 24 seven for three straight years. Um, like, obviously I went outside and I like did things, but like, it really messes your brain up in ways you can't possibly fathom when you are not social or like broadening your own horizons or like doing that kind of stuff for all of that time, you know? It really messes up your head. But now, now that I'm here and now that I am being more of a social butterfly, I'm starting to like almost look back on it as a time of reflection where like all of the little things that I did not enjoy about my own life, it was, it, it, they became very clear. Like it, 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 it there's a way of uh, that life slaps you in the face sometimes, you know? There's a way that life can do that, so. Not always a bad thing. Not always a bad thing. Anywho, what were we talking about? We were talking about like being bald or something. No, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Not that one. Uh, what were we talking about? Um, what is it to be trenched? I'm not 100% sure I know what you mean. To rephrase my previous comment in a more polite way, the average person mocks classmates for not being bulked up stoic enough, yet rumors tough tomboys have crushes on said guys. Then they act incredulous. Helen's into Kyle. I'm going to be honest, YouTube poop. I don't know what you're spitting right now. I can tell you're spitting something, but I've got no idea what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> this, is, this is a little too far beyond, beyond my comprehension. Yo, Emerald! Yo, shoutouts to Emerald. You guys know I've been shouting out lots of people. I shouted out the Ratchet and Clank speedrunning community. I shouted out my stream chat. I, sh I shouted out many, many people. I gotta shout out Emerald. Emerald is the current world record holder for uh, this category. Not Platinum Trophy, but Ratchet and Clank 2 Max Percent. Emerald is a PS3 Rack 2 beast and is currently learning the ropes of, uh, of Rack 2 ps2 stuff as well so it's really cool to see uh emerald is the person that i'm trying to beat in all this you know emerald is going to be the uh the quote-unquote villain of the story you know uh in, in the youtube video gonna be like this dude is you know he, he's cracked he's absolutely cracked at ratchet too been playing it for many many uh, how many years has it been now emerald like you've been playing for a few years now at this point right but uh yeah regardless Amarav is the person to beat, and I'm going to do my best to beat him. Um, are you saying that hard times will make your life better down the line? That's exactly what I'm saying, Maracus. In ways that you can't possibly expect when you're in the in, in the heat of those moments. Uh, you ever you ever considered starting streaming? You sound like you would be pretty good at it. Yeah, like that. 
you know, yeah, maybe, maybe someday. I don't know. I, I've heard streamers are kind of cringe, you know? I, I heard they post cringe all the time, so I, I listen. I only post based, so I'm not sure if that could really be my life. But we'll see. <laughs> As XQC once said, give a man a fish, teach him how to eat, or learn him how to eat. Give a man, uh, learning a man, uh, how to, yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's the kind of shit, oh, I'm sorry, that's the kind of stuff they can't teach you. That's the kind of stuff they can't teach you, you know? I told you guys, I would, I would, I, I'd keep it PG-13, I, I, I'd have one or two slip-ups, I almost, you know, tripped over my, I'm moving on. I, I brought too much attention to it. What am I doing? It's been a long day. <laughs> anyway, the point being, I love you guys. You guys are great. And if, you know, it all comes... You know what it comes back to after all of this is said and done? It comes back to the Mets. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's about the Mets. Um, and if you all are not ready to accept that, then, you know, that's... Um, yo, wait a minute. Okay, when is the next, like, premier tennis tournament? Does anybody happen to know? It was the U.S. Open, right? So, in theory, it should be Australian Open soon. I'm a big tennis fan. Just trying to know, uh, you know. Shanghai Masters. Okay, the, we we look at the Masters from time to time, but I, I'm more so looking. Oh wait, I guess it would be the ATP Finals. Does anybody happen to know when the ATP Finals are? That's what I want to know. Yeah, uh, somebody please help me. I'm not a tennis person. Yeah, whatever. I'll look it up <laughs> There's later. There's only so much I can do. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I don't care about that. You know what I do care about? When is the next big Melee tournament? That's what I want to know. Any Super All Smash right. Brothers Melee fans in the crowd? That's what I need to know. I think it's Big House, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't remember when it is. The Mets who didn't make the playoffs? Oh, I wouldn't know. I don't watch baseball. I actually hate baseball, and I hate American football. I, I think they're both such stupid sports. I hate them. Like, they're so boring and so stupid. I prefer racket sports or any 1v1 combat sport. I Okay, can I be completely honest with you all? Um, I... I ha My mind has been poisoned by the anime Baki. I don't know how many of you have ever seen the anime Baki. But it's basically just an anime of the manliest, most muscle-bound dudes you could possibly imagine beating each other within an inch of their lives. It's insane. And ever since I started watching Baki, I actually think that MMA is for cowards. And let me explain. I think if you were a true warrior, you would fight like a combat sport that has absolutely no rules. I think like, I wanna see bloodshed. <laughs> I, I wanna see like underhanded tactics. I wanna see everything. Like that's what I want. Like, I think if, if a ref has to stop you mid-match, your sport just isn't, like, it isn't brutal enough for me. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. Baki is goaded. I can't wait to see how the Jack arc plays out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Zem, no. What? So, so the Romans are allowed to have the gladiators, but I can't have Baki-style combat? This is messed up. <laughs> uh, going back to your Smash uh, question, Big House yes. is on the 20th. Of uh, this month? Um, yes. Wonderful. There, th so this site claims to be melee majors. I don't, I'm, I don't know what people consider a major. Uh, but Kilroy Volume Seven is the seventh, and Rise and Grind is the thirteenth. Okay, so those are like those are like uh, majors, or th those are like uh, regionals, I think. Uh, okay. But they're they're maybe nationals at best, but definitely not a super major. Um, the big house is where the magic goes down. I'm a I'm a big Zane fan. If any of you are, are Smash uh, enthusiasts, I'm a I'm I, I I'm a Marth main, so I I root for Zane. He's my boy. Resident Moist uh, player, yep. Resident Moist. Oh, I just remembered he's like, I have such mixed feelings about Charlie these days. <laughs> Ever since the Red right. Guard incident. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry, not Moist. Uh, 
What is what is just uh moguls? There we go, moguls. Oh yeah, no, it still is moist. Like moist is a part of it. Um, what well, I thought. But, yeah. So I thought. I thought Moist Moguls was specifically the Valo team, and then they had their own uh, other teams. Uh, I, actually, if I remember correctly, they are teaming up with some other organization nowadays, and okay. it's uh, it's like Moist X something else now, but Ludwig is still a part of it. Okay. Why? So I, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. I, nah, I was gonna say I I was under the impression that Moguls was Ludwig, Moist was Charlie, and they specifically teamed up for the one team, but they still had their separate teams. I look, I don't know, I, just, I don't know. <laughs> if if I if I uh, if I understand the lore correctly, it is that they are a part of all of their uh, their esports teams. Like it's not just the Valorant team; it's also gotcha. like the okay. the other ones. So yeah. Oh yeah, it's Shopify. Thank you, Shopify. Oh, it's okay. So you were right, Church. That is for Valorant only. Um, the 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 mogul or the Moist X Shopify. Oops, I uh, did not mean to do okay. that. But every other thing is Moist Moguls, apparently. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So uh, yeah, I, I'm lost in the weeds incident. on this. The Red Guard incident. Oh, that 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 is uh, that is what we are. Uh, we have choice words for Charlie on. <laughs> yeah, so um, I actually made a YouTube video about this. Shoutouts to my YouTube channel. Um, I made a video on my experience doing the Moist Critical $10,000 speedrun challenge. I took part in the one that happened in May, and I actually almost won. Um, almost being the operative word, but I feel like I still did my, my community and my peers proud with my performance. I got third place. I was in first place all the way until the final few hours, and then I couldn't close it out. Um, but yeah, I made a whole YouTube video on my experience doing it. It was a terrible experience. Um, if any of you have ever thought to yourselves, I should do this this moist $10,000 challenge someday, don't do it. It's absolutely horrible. It's a horrible experience, and it, the format needs to be changed, but Charlie refuses to do anything about it. So I will always deter people away from doing this insane thing, I think it's ridiculously unhealthy, and it's and it needs to have a gigantic structure uh, rebranding. But I mean, whatever. I'm just one person, right? So we're all entitled to our own opinions. I mean, I did uh, the first one, and then the sort. I sort of did the first and second one. I haven't done the third and fourth. That's all yeah. I'm gonna say on the matter. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually shocked to see some people who I thought were done doing these do this most recent one. Um, like. I, I would do it in a heartbeat if it was like 10 days instead of 14. But 14 is just, it's too much of a grind. It's too much. It's way too much. And uh, it's, it's its extremely bad for for people's healths to be doing that sort of thing, you know? Um, and speedrunners, unfortunately, are not always known for being the people who make the best decisions with their free time. Um, and so, I don't know. Just not, not my jam anymore. Not my jam. Um, so... Yeah. Basically, I like the idea of the challenge, but I don't like the way it's implemented. That's that's all I really have to say on the matter. I think um, it is a neat idea. Um, and it is. Just, it is. Somebody brought up uh, they wished that it was a more polished or popular game. So Charlie did talk about that, and I don't necessarily disagree with him. It is a very hard... Um, choice kind of like a, a middle ground because he is looking for games that like the point of the challenge was to bring speedrunners to games that don't have a lot of runners or might not be well known so i understand like he's trying to pick games that are deserving of speedruns that don't have them yet so i get what he's trying to do and i appreciate that it is a very difficult middle ground to find games that are enjoyable to play and also fit that category because most games that are worth speed running probably have to be done by now. Yeah, that's that's the sad uh, reality of it. It's it's a I don't envy his position. I don't think he realized. Correct. Sorry, I don't think he realized um, what he was getting himself into when he created this challenge. I genuinely don't. And I also genuinely believe that he doesn't really care all that much about the challenge, but he kind of just does it these days more out of obligation. 
But that's more my own axe to bear, and and I'm sorry, I shouldn't be like inserting my opinions like this. It's it's uh it's not proper of me to do this. So I'd like to strike that from the record. <laughs> um, I I appreciate what he's doing for the speedrunning community. Wait, look, I'm not the one in charge of it, so I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna point fingers and tell him what he should or shouldn't do. I do not envy the position he's in in the slightest. At the yeah. end of the day, he is trying to do the speedrunning community r r right. Yeah, and he's I think trying. That's awesome. Yeah, I that's uh, like you're you're doing it. I I personally don't like the game that you pick. Uh, but I don't do. I didn't do the challenges that, and that's that's all there is to it. And the people who are doing it, they're you know that's that's, you know it's it's their choice. And uh, I just wish the games were better. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault you for that. So you know. Yeah, and, and I also I need to double check something. I always weirded out if uh, okay I got to be or not to be hit. Great. Um, okay, sorry. I needed to make sure that I beat the B2 Brawler without taking any damage there for a skill point slash trophy. And now we're going to get another skill point for uh, breaking all collectibles in this area. So uh, we're going to head up here. You won't believe what Zeb says next. Exactly. We got to get our little clickbait lines in there. You know what I mean? Um, you know what? That's I, I can take that the title. Dude. You, <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> You, you, at, at the at the how what, like whatever timestamp we're on right now, at this timestamp, you will not believe what he says. <laughs> um, I messed up the camera clips, so now I have to de quick clip through this. Not a problem though. Um, okay, great. God, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm sorry. I know, like, this is so unrelated to the game. I'm so excited for this week. I really, really am because, like. Not only do I not have to worry about finding an apartment in the Netherlands anymore, which if you guys missed that speech, go back a couple hours at this point. You'll hear me talk about how I moved from America to the Netherlands. Um, but like, I'm so excited because I finally have my apartment. I can finally start applying for my visa and I get to go to a wedding. Weddings are so cool. Like weddings are usually like a very big to do, but if you don't have to do a lot in the wedding, it's awesome. It's so much fun because all you get to do is just like, like just drink at the open bar and, and just like have a good time. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know. It, like, I'm just so excited for it. It's going to be great. I'm going to get to see a bunch of my friends that I haven't seen in a long time. Um, and I'm excited for this week. But I also uh, I want to keep making content. How can I clone myself so that the content can keep happening while I go to a wedding? Hmm. All right, we, we're going to have to get Quebble Cop on the case for this one. All right, so I got this skill point. So now I can death abuse, go back to my ship, and I should be getting another trophy very shortly. And now I believe I go to Damazel. So Damazel is one of the only planets uh, that you don't normally see in Ratchet and Clank speedruns. It's um, it's quite rare, actually. Uh, I think the only categories that have it are the 100% categories and all Platinum Bolts. But even all Platinum Bolts doesn't really have... Uh, much Damazel exposure to it. So this is like the full Damazel experience. You you can't make a perfect clone or something, but you can make a 50% clone and give it 18 years. Alright, I don't even know what the heck you just said, Supersonic. Uh, I, you're going to need to explain that to me again. Just go no, full no, Carl. What does that even mean, going full Carl? Oh, somebody, somebody earlier, you, you asked about uh, content, uh, and the content would be I speedrun Minecraft at my best friend's wedding. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's, there's full Carl Jacob. There's, there's, wait, did Carl Jacobs actually do that? No, I mean, oh, that's the kind of video Carl does. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, that is actually breaking new ground, I think, just a little bit. Um, I think that it would be so, like, I would get in so much trouble, but it would be such funny content, you know? <laughs> my my friend would literally never let me hear the end of it. She would talk about how I, like, met, like... Oh, she would never let me live that down. But it would be funny. It would be funny. Okay, so we have to do this um, mothership fight. And so the way this mothership fight works, a lot of people don't know this. If you stand still... So you have to break four of, of the mothership's little babies and then stand still. And then if you stand still... The mothership will fl like basically just like come down right in front of you, and then you can just loop the cycle over and over. Uh, and if you're not close enough, 
You can always just throw a bomb, because the bombs do a ton of damage as well. I have to be very careful here, because I'm at really low health. Um, I think I'm in phase two now. Yeah, I'm in phase two. This is where it gets a little dicey. I gotta hit the mothership by just jumping on top of her over and over. Okay, I'm gonna go down here for a second. Oh my god. Oh, don't kill me, please. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, uh, um, okay. Okay, this is scary. This is scary. This is scary. Don't do it. Do not do it. I'm begging you nicely. Please don't do it. Don't hurt me. Oh my god. I gotta get health. I gotta get health. I gotta get health. I gotta get health. You can get health by breaking buildings. Maybe. It's a, it's a random. I'm just gonna get a little bit more just for safety. No. 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 Oh, no. We make new mistakes around these parts. We embrace... We, we embrace the new mistakes that we're making. That was entirely a skill issue. I, I know exactly what I did wrong. I, uh, I... You can't mindlessly spam punch on this level because the guys who have their little electrical tasers out there, they will get you. Um, so that was entirely my fault that I did not space that appropriately. I should have known better. Listen, in League of Legends, I'm a jungler. Spacing is everything that I think about all the time. I should have known better. It's my fault. It's a skill issue. At least you're not getting flamed in that right now. Yeah, at least I don't have four flame, uh, four teammates flaming me and telling me to, to like, you know... Well, I don't want to repeat uh -huh. what they tell me in this. <laughs> yeah, you guys know the drill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, some things are better left unsaid. Um... All right, so stand still, and the mothership comes down. I need another bomb. Did you zig instead of zag? Yeah, I ducked and dove instead of dipping and dodging, you know? It's it like I should have known better. Which champs do you play? I am the... Well, I, I'm, I don't play in NA anymore, but upon leaving NA, I was the number eight ranked Shyvana player in the entire server. So I was, uh, I ended my NA uh, experience at Diamond 2. Uh, I'm a Shyvana one trick, and my goal for this season is to hit Master 200 LP. Um, and it's funny, if anybody of you, if any one of you know anything about Shyvana, it's especially hilarious because Shyvana is probably the uh, worst jungler in the entire game. I, I can't think of a single jungler worse than her. But okay, I love that. I, I can think of worse junglers. Uh, well, okay, okay, okay. Champions that are designed to be in the jungler, the jungle, that All are right. worse than her. Okay. All right. There we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> she is an absolutely terrible champion in every way, shape, and form. But I love her to death. The game makes so much sense to me when I play her. I can't explain it. Zem failing to beat the melee Marth protagonist syndrome allegations. Jaxler. I love you, buddy. <laughs> So number eight of eight. Oh my god. <laughs> relax, relax. Number you play Marth? You... Yeah, there's at least nine. Come on, I can think of at least nine. There's me. There's um. Anyway, hi Gazerg Gazerg. It's great to see you, dude. Shoutouts to Gazerg Gazerg. He's an IRL friend. We sang in a in a in a church choir in Pittsburgh together. And I haven't seen him in years. We also used to play Melee together a bunch. I want you to know, man, anytime you want the hands, I will give them to you. I, although, you're gonna have to deal with it with, like, you know, a bunch of ping now. The Legends when they are in a league or something? Yeah, true. That's basically the way to think about it. Oh, yeah, by the way, I manipulated a skill point right there by um, touching... So you get a skill point if you do the entire grind rail section without taking damage. Um, if you basically do what I just did, where I, I like propel Ratchet off of uh, the grind rail and then just cut right to the end, even though I took damage, it still gives me the skill point. I don't know why that works, but it just works. So I don't question it. Oh no. Okay, I made a little oopsie. I low key feel sorry for ranked players with how toxic their game is. You know. After a while, you learn to appreciate the beauty of the game for what it is. You know, the ragers aside. <laughs> I used to be extremely toxic, but then I realized it was because I was a deeply unhappy person. 
And now that I'm a much happier person, it's like, whatever. You know, I still get annoyed sometimes, but like, you know, I don't flame people anymore. Plus, I play... Uh, most of who I play with these days is just my one, like, uh, my one friend. She just started playing League, and uh, she's actually having a lot of fun with it, so we're playing a lot together, and I'm trying to show her the ropes. So, it's fun when you play with a friend. Uh, am I? Hold on. What nanotech am I missing? Hold on. I gotta think about this. Because I should have all the nanotech now, right? What nanotech am I missing? Hold on. I gotta run through the map in my head real quick. No, 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 What did I miss? I got the one on Bolden for sure. I got the one on Tando. I got the one on Tabora, right? I got the the Dabo Nanotech. It's the Dabo Nanotech. I missed the Dabo Nanotech. Okay. You're playing ARAM right now? I love ARAM. I absolutely love it. I knew I was forgetting something. See, if I had my splits open, I would have remembered. I swear. Oh, dude, wait. I'm, I'm, wait, 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 wait. This is actually dangerous. I'm clown skinned now. I'm, I'm clown skinned. Um, so if you all don't remember what I said before, you can only be... Okay, so when you are doing this category, right? Um, you only have, when you activate Quick Exploit, a certain amount of time to play through everything. Otherwise, you risk crashing the game. And Clown Skin means I'm a little bit closer than I was before to crashing the game. So it's... A little on the scary side, but we should be fine. We should be fine, gamers. Um, okay. So, down here. I should be going over here now. I have Clank. TFT Gamer. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really understand the appeal of TFT, and there's the nanotech that I was looking for. I don't really understand the appeal of TFT, but mostly because, like, I don't know, I just don't really get the idea of playing a game that plays itself. Then again, I also did play Cookie Clicker for about a year and a half, so maybe I have no right to say that. I so, I think the genre is interesting. I think the problem with PFT is that PFT changes every six months, and like, I don't have the time to learn a new game every six months. Yeah, I mean that's basically like League in a lot of ways. Like the game completely changes all the time. And it's so I, frustrating. It, but it, it like TFT is even worse though, because like even the league. I mean, may, it, it's been a while since I played, so maybe they're like even more groundbreaking than before. But like even the dragon changes, they're big, but the gameplay is still ninety percent the same. You just need mm. to figure out what objectives you're going for. But in TFT, like literally every set, they change how all of it works. Like it, it's yeah. still the basic like you level up your characters and stuff, but like, oh, now all of the attributes are different, which means everything plays differently. You know, it's... Mm, that makes sense. Um, uh, you know what, Ray? I, I at least see that part of the beauty of TFT, where it is a lot of just, like, adaptation to whatever, whatever it is is actually happening. Um, in a way, I can see that being quite a very beautiful process. It's just for me personally, I I don't know. I just don't get it. it. It messes with my league brain too much because I'm like, why would you put, you know, a uh, rapid fire cannon on like a Zerath or something like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't really understand yes. why certain items go to certain characters. Yeah, so, why, do, why, why does Jax get a, a, a remains and uh, a, a death one? Like, yeah, that yeah. make sense. Yeah, th like we're not we're not the Baus FFS here, okay? We, do, we can't just build whatever we want. Um, so, anywho, League Talk aside, um, I don't know, I, I, uh, oh, you know what, wait, who said that, uh, speedrunning, yeah, Supersonic Blur, sorry, I, I just, I, I just saw the comment of you saying that I tried to speedrun one trillion cookies and cookie clicker one time, and that is true, and I actually still want that world record really badly. The problem with one trillion cookies is that it is ridiculously luck dependent, so, um, like, I actually click faster than any other cookie clicker speedrunner I've ever seen play the game. Like, I usually, like, I once clicked 
at 11 clicks per second for seven straight hours. Um, so I know I've got the chops to do it. It's just the problem is you need the right golden cookies to do it. And like, it, it's like, it's such a vibe check because I'm like, yes, I'm going to go in this and I'm going to get the world record. It's going to be easy. And then I get like one of the right golden cookies and I just get endlessly frustrated while my chat is just like spamming me with like dumb memes the whole time. God, I love this game when I was a child. I also love this game when I was a child. It's an amazing game. And it's even more beautiful when you get to learn the speed run. What were you going to say, Church? Uh, I respect people who can do seven hour speed runs. No, I, not for me. Not for me. <laughs> it takes a I, certain kind of mindset, you know? You, you got to really be in it for the, for the experience of it. Yep. But yeah, I don't know. I think by and large, like, at this point, I've done, like... Speedruns as long as 12 hours. I've done speedruns as long as 27 hours, actually. And I've done speedruns as short as, like, two minutes. And it's so cool because, like, the reason why I think speedrunners should branch out from time to time from their main speed game or their main speed series is that you learn something totally new every speed game that you run. Um, the, shout outs to the Rixer. Um, one of the most, like, one of, if not the most influential PlayStation speedrunner there is. And uh, everyone knows Ricky as the kind of guy who can just, like, go into, like, whatever speedrun that he wants and just, like, get world record regardless of game. It's because he's trained that muscle, you know? It's because he's, he's trained that muscle of, like, learning new games and, like, seeing the different nuances between games, like... It's important for every speedrunner to do that kind of stuff, you know? And so at least once a year, I try to speedrun a really, really dumb meme game. Um, and, and I try my best to grind for world record in it. And uh, I want to let you all know that this year, uh, I've settled on a new one. So obviously there was Red Guard, but that's like not really a meme game that I'm doing for fun. The meme game of this year that I'm going to attempt is Roblox Doors. I did not okay. know this, but the Doors game mode in Roblox is the fifth most popular speedrun ever. Like, it is yeah. more popular by number of players than Super Mario 64. I'm not even kidding. And it is almost completely luck dependent. And so it is just the right amount of stupid for me. So I'm definitely tackling some Doors. I'm not sure when exactly, because I've got a pretty full plate of content ahead of me. But, uh, yeah, if you guys didn't know, today you learned that the fifth most popular speedrun of all time is Roblox Doors. So, um, before we get too far away from it, um, sure, you brought sure, up sure, sure. a 27 hour speedrun. And whenever we talk about longer runs like that, I like to bring up uh, something I found out recently. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think more communities should do it. Um, and I do not remember what game it was anymore, but recently, uh, in my, uh, just searching through speedrun.com as I do, um, I found there was a game that has, it's like a six hour speedrun, um, and they allow breaks. So you are allowed one 30 minute break at some point in your run. You get to choose when it is, you can just take 30 minutes, you can cut your stream, they don't care, and you, you just get to take a 30, or sorry, no, not this one. You, you, you had to keep your stream going, but you can just take a break. They also have like a 30 hour category where they're like, you can, I think you get like three breaks and it's like, yeah, you, you get to cut your stream. We don't care. You can do this in three chunks. Like, just get the run done. We don't care. Take your breaks. Don't be here for 27 hours. And I think that's really cool for the longer run to be like, yeah, this is not the most healthy uh, thing we should promote. So maybe we should promote like, you know, being reasonable people. <laughs> Um, I have things to say, but I'm wondering why this Leviathan isn't popping out of his his little cave. Come on, come you out your cave, please. Please and thank you. What is happening? Um, okay, so I want to give a shout out to the Ratchet community for this because, uh, basically after it was, it was, a lot of it was spawned because of, of my run and a lot of it was spawned because a lot of people, like, it wasn't just me, it was other people as well who did this, like, challenge. Oh, there it is. Um, and, uh, after, so 
the world record for that category that I did in 27 hours before I got world record was actually 38 hours. And he did it all in one sitting. It was unbelievable. Um, and basically after he did his run and after I did my run, the community, we decided like this is unreasonable to ask people to do for longer categories. And so we do allow, I believe uh, people are allowed. So for, so for example, this, this category was trifecta. Um, 100% uh, original trilogy trifecta and nowadays we allow people uh, for the shorter categories like the the hour and a half to like four hour trifectas we allow people a uh, 30 minute break or is it an hour long break it's at least 30 minutes in between games and uh, for the longer category so world record for 100% trifecta these days is about 11 hours I believe maybe 10 um, and, uh, we allow people, I believe for every, is it eight hour breaks? I forget what it is. Can somebody, 16 hour break after eight hours. Okay. Then another 16 hours after every six hours. So yeah, we, we basically kind of did, we like, it's just completely unreasonable to ask people to do insane stretches of gameplay. Um, it's completely unreasonable. And so, I don't know, I'm, I'm in full agreement with you. I think that, like, again, at the core of its, of its like, being, speedrunning is meant to be fun. And if people try to act like you should harm yourself for the sake of your craft, that is completely ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Basically, all I'm really trying to get at here is, is just to confirm that I, I agree with this and I, I think it's good to have more communities that like uh, allow themselves rest periods because you know like why not <laughs> you know like what what do you what what sort of prize do you win from the self-harm of of like forcing yourself to do something completely insane I actually don't like the this is probably the most notorious marathon run I don't like the 602 for this exact reason. Um, I, I think it's already hard enough to ask people to, to learn four different 100% categories. Um, obviously, these people are choosing to do this, but like, you know, people choose to do dumb things all the time. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try to look out for people. So, yeah, I don't know. And I've heard a lot of people in the in the Mario community argue that like, it's stupid to ask them to not do this. Which I'm just like, okay. Like, we're just trying to look out for people, you know? <laughs> not that it happens all that often. Just like, you know, there's a few people who get very prideful about these things. You know how it is. We're speedrunners. We're, we're always weirdly prideful people in some ways. Um, I, I've been kind of aimlessly meandering around here. So I should explain, I have to collect all 101 Moonstones. Um, and I, I've, I've been like rambling, like roaming around doing absolutely nothing because I'm, I'm just trying to find ammo. Um, I'm not sure how I, I am so low on ammo right now, but it's actually kind of problematic. So I'm trying to deal with the problem. Um, I should be able to find some around this area, I believe. Yes. You kind of have to memorize as well where all the nanotech and ammo crate, or uh, where all the, the ammo crates are in the area so you don't end up running out of ammo at any point. Uh, so somebody um, was bringing up the fact that they think 16 hours is a little ridiculous. So I, it, it is important to take into account when you're doing long, ca like a 27 hour category. Um, th there's, there's a few things here. First of all, uh, I, earlier this stream, I said seven hours. I, this was like 20 minutes ago, actually, like seven hours. I would never do that. Um, the l more you make it the more inaccessible it is to do long speedruns, the less people are going to do it. Would I do yeah. a 27-hour speedrun of a game I enjoyed if I could do it over the course of a week? Yeah, I would. Like, if there was a run I legitimately wanted to do, I might do it over the course of a week. You know, after work, I would do, you know, four hours, four hours, four hours, and then, you know, I'd get it done. But you're asking me to sacrifice, like, one of my days off, and I don't get to sleep I don't, like, I have to figure out when I get to eat, that kind of stuff. I have to figure out when I get to take bathroom breaks. Like, that's not something I'm going to do. 
So you're going to see a huge decline in people running these categories because they're not accessible. Um, which isn't good for our, our community. Like, first of all, just have, making people have to do that is bad. But then just like, how, how are these games going to grow? How are our communities going to grow if we are making it excessively difficult for people to get into it? Like, oh, you have to do 27 hours and you have to suffer the entire time. That's bad. And second yeah. of all, I don't think, like, a 27-hour game, I don't see it as a test of endurance. I see it as a test of, this game is a long game, this is how, or this category is long, um, and it just takes 27 hours. There's, there shouldn't be any endurance in it. Like, at the end of the day, we're, we're making this arbitrary decision to play the game as fast as possible, but... If I were just a casual player, I wouldn't play all 27 hours in one go. So I think it's unreasonable to say <laughs> that speedrunning long categories should be a test of endurance. I think it's just like, yo, it's a, this is the category we want to play, but it's long. Yeah, I mean, I'm of the mindset that if you really care all that much about doing it in one sitting, just do it. Like, you know, who's going to stop you? But I don't think you should you should force people to do that either. I think that like for insanely long categories, we should be respectful of the fact that other people have lives, you know? Oh, what am I doing? My movement is so awkward. It's so awkies. Uh, I'm gonna save real quick. Uh, there's another trophy. We're actually nearing the end of this run. Um, I just wanna say that it has been an absolute pleasure first and foremost. Whether you guys like me or whether you guys are, are just sick and tired of, of seeing me, um, I just appreciate you guys that, that, that you all were here to begin with. So first of all, I'm going to quit the game. Um, then I'm going to reload the set aside Gorn file that I made like three hours ago. Um, and then at that point, the magic will begin again. So now what I need to do is I need to load this file. Then I'm going to do it and then I'm going to reload the file I was just on. And you guys are going to see why I had to do that. It's it's actually really, really funny. So, um, if you all don't know, we have to get all the upgrades for the ship as well. That's a part of max percent. Um, however, getting all of the the uh, the upgrades for the ship, usually, I think it takes about 130 raritanium, which, do you all remember how long it took me just to get to 60? We don't want to do that. We want to do something a little bit faster. So, we're going to activate quit exploit again. And we're going to do something a little silly here. So remember, I need about 130 Raritanium to get all of the upgrades. Um, so what I'm going to do here is... Um, it is... First, I'm going to restock on ammo. This is, this is very, very important because I'm not going to have many more chances. So um, I hope you all enjoyed being ultra multi 100 millionaires uh, because that's about to go away. Um, unfortunately, we, we, we went from hero to zero in a heartbeat. Inflation hit real bad. Okay. But there is an upside to this. Uh, so check out my raritanium count now. Bottom, or no, I'm sorry. Top right corner. We're now at 453,000 raritanium. So we should be able to afford all these upgrades. <laughs> um, oh, and we, we can even get a cool skin. All right. Um, you know what? For this particular run, I think I'm going to buy the plaid tastic or the plaid tastic skin. That's the one I want. I want plaid tastic. This is a cute one. Um, yeah, 450,000 raritanium. Not so rare anymore, eh? So now at this point, I'm going to go back to Gorn. Uh, I'm going to finish all the missions because I didn't do that yet. Yeah, I know. Socioeconomic, socioeconomic disparity. Hitting harder than ever. All right, so now we do mission three. We do mission four. Um. Yeah, actually, Twitch Basu, I, I was, I was having a conversation with somebody recently. She was telling me about how RuneScape speedruns are divided across. Like, obviously, you know, they take hundreds and hundreds of hours, and so. You know, you can just, like, pick them up and, and, and put them down whenever you want. You're, you're not, like, forced to keep your computer running at all times. I think that's great. You know, wait a minute. Oh, I thought I was 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Sorry, I was looking at the raritanium count. Um, 
I don't know. I, I just think overall speedrunning should be fun first and foremost. And if you're trying to put, uh, if you're trying to force people to do something just because you want to see it done a certain way, just just do it yourself. Like who cares? Um, you know, at the end of the day, no. At the end of the day, and this is a scalding hot take. Okay, scalding hot take. At the end of the day, speedrunning doesn't freaking matter. It doesn't matter. It is. It is. Purely, there was a there was a Ratchet and Clank runner who once described it as just building sandcastles. You know, we build the sandcastle today, and then it gets washed into the ocean, and, and then the day that we stop building sandcastles is the day that our runs start getting beaten. You know, none of it matters. Just have fun. It's it, don't don't take it so seriously that you lose the forest and the trees. You know. All right. Anywho. We're done with Gorn, and we can head over to Bolden now. I know, Skull, that's, that's, that, you know, I'm basically Patrick Starr with my arms chained up right now, you know? That's, that's, I'm, I'm that meme that you all saw on your, on your timelines for the last week on Twitter. Oh, wait, I keep doing this when I have the Tetra Bomb gun at. Jimi Hendrix ran rack? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. Um, okay, so now I need to get the last two platinum bolts. Ooh, ooh. I just did something kind of swag, and I want to remember to do that for later. Um. <laughs> no, not Balden. Um, okay, so we that is the second to last. And remember, guys, remember how I said we were brokey now? Look at us. Look at how far our bolt count has fallen. What happened, dude? What happened? Oh, okay, hold on. Give me a second here. So this should be the last Platinum Bolt we have to collect, and we should be seeing a trophy pop up very, very soon. We should be getting it. If not, I really screwed up. Please. Platinum Bolt. Trophy, please. And thank you. No. Oh, yes. That was so scary. Okay. <laughs> um... All right, so now we should be getting the last skill point as well. So, uh, same thing as before, where you, the skill point is for doing this entire thing without taking damage. However, we're just gonna start the rail section, get off the rail section, and then charge to the very, very end. And then this should give me a trophy for all skill points. It should be coming up any second now. And now I'm going to spend all of these platinum bolts on these gun mods. No shocking developments. Now give me the other trophy for all skill points, please, and thank you. Oh, good. I was going to say, which one did I miss? <laughs> okay, so now that we've gotten that, the final trophy of the entire run, the last one, we go to the Insomniac Museum, and all we have to do is just step foot in the museum, and then we can leave. So we stand right here, and then we just get the heck out. Trophy number one coming up, and platinum trophy to follow. Assuming I did everything correctly, he went commando. There it is. There's the platinum trophy. Speed run for you all in under four hours. Um, and now to finish the actual run. So I have everything now. I'm going to do one final check. Just to make sure I have all collectibles, all items, all skill points, all platinum bolts. I mean, I already know I have those two, but got to make sure we have everything, everything. So let me check the items. Uh, well, ignore that and ignore that. Uh, but yeah, I got all things that carry between playthroughs. This run is nearly finished. So now I just need to go over here and we're going to fight the final boss. Thank you all so much for being a part of this crazy journey. Um, if you all don't know, this is my first week back to speedrunning. Like, this is my first week back to speedrunning, seriously, like s serious Ratchet and Clank content in eight months. And even back in January, it had been like a long time since then as well. So it, it has been a very, very long time since I've really seriously committed myself to creating Ratchet and Clank speedrunning content. It's content that I lost a lot of love for and finally found it all again when I started 
seeing happiness in my own life. And so if you guys are interested in seeing not just Ratchet and Clank speedrunning content, but also Ratchet and Clank and other PlayStation related modded content. So for example, this week we're doing Ratchet 1 multiplayer. Did you guys know there's a Ratchet 1 multiplayer mod now? We're going to be doing like four of the best Ratchet and Clank 1 speedrunners ever are going to be getting into a call. We're going to be doing races. We're going to be doing a group speed run. We're going to be doing, uh, you know, we're going to be doing uh, hide and seek. That's something else we've got coming up. I've got Ratchet and Clank, but every time I get a kill, the game gets faster. Hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Before I finish this. I, I haven't done this at a GDQ run in a long time, so I just want to say uh, time is coming up in three, two, one, time. Um, GG. GG. What a hell of a run, my god. Um, but yeah, so we got every kill makes my game faster. We've got um, every 10 minutes my controller, like the, the controls get randomized. That's what we're working on right now. So if you guys want to see all of this stuff, we're even doing right now It Takes Two, but you control player two. And it was a crazy, stupid, insane experience. So if you like PlayStation modded content, if you like Ratchet and Clank speedruns, if you like platinum trophy grinds, I am the person to follow. I am, uh, I am, I stream five days to six days a week on Twitch, and I make YouTube videos all the time. Uh, I'm also, you know, I'm doing all sorts of socials, so please shoot me a follow if you enjoyed the speedrunner, even if you just enjoy the vibes. Um, it would really go a long way to helping me out towards my content goals, so. Oh, that's about it. Um, shoutouts once again to, you know what, final shoutouts to all of you. Um, this was a hell of an experience and I'm glad you all got to experience it with me. Shoutouts to Church, thank you for asking me to do this on such short notice. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and shout outs to, you know, the GDQ staff, um, you know, you all have such a, uh, this is such an elaborate system and you all do such a great job of running it and making sure that not only do you do it for the speedrunners, but making sure that each community can have their time in the sun. So, you know, thank you for doing all your best to keep speedrunning alive and healthy. So uh, that's about it, I think. Yeah. Uh, I want to say a uh, huge uh, thank you for uh, being on. Uh, even like you said, I know it was a little bit of short notice, but uh, I tuned in, I think literally the first day you started, I was like, all right, Zen's back in it. Let's see if Zen's on board. Um, so uh, thank you so much. I, I This was a great show. Thank you so much. You did uh, fantastic. Um, in case you're wondering, uh, 342.55. Considering that if we actually subtracted the breaks, that would have been a personal best for me. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that run. There were some mistakes. There's a lot of lessons that I learned and I'm ready to crush this PP tomorrow. So you can catch me on, on uh, live tomorrow as well. If you want to see me beat this record and or beat this time and uh, well, you know, just beat it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, if you want to see me beat this. <laughs> um, uh, with that said, we don't have anything else for you today. Uh, we do have more hotfix for you coming up tomorrow. Uh, we are going to have, it starts all at 7 p.m. Eastern. We've got, uh, we have a one-off, which I actually don't think, which one's tomorrow? It's either Pokemon or, yeah, it's Pokemon uh, Teal Mask. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, which is the uh, it's a DLC for the newest game, I believe. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure of that. Yeah, it's yeah, Pokemon yeah, yeah. Scarlet. Yeah, that's the newest DLC. Uh, so yeah, we have that starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, and then after that, we have Out of Bounds. Uh, we up to see you there. Uh, we're going to take a quick break while we look for a rate target. If you wouldn't mind sticking around just to uh, cheer somebody else on in some speedrunning, that would be awesome. And uh, have a great night, everyone. Bye. Thank you for watching.